Joe DeRosa in studio. It's been a while. What's up, Joey? Hey, guys. How are you? We jump right into it now. Yeah. Fuck that. Good morning, and thanks for listening to the Opie and Anthony show. Nah. uh, Duh. (laughs) <laughs> Filling in for the vacationing Jimmy Norton. Where's he <laughs> vacationing? Ah, he's not vacationing. He's doing a Leno thing out there. Oh, and, uh, he's in Arizona, though. Uh, for the BCS uh, championship. Is that what it is? Yeah, the biggest fucking college football game of the year. Oh. The game. Man, I got to I gotta start watching sports, man. I, uh, I literally know nothing. I, I didn't mean, even know what BCS was when you said that. I think you're missing it. I don't know either. Why don't you watch sports? I never played them when I was a kid. I sucked at them, so I never got interested in them. And I just never, that was it. Like, I couldn't, if I can't re- remotely do it, I can't watch it. You, you know don't want to I mean? watch it. Well, you know, like, if I don't, because I don't understand it. I can't, you know. I, ca- I can't fucking play hockey, but I love watching it. But are you, eth- you're athletic in other ways, though, right? I used to be. I, I, I was, yeah, I grew up playing a lot of sports. But now, I, now I'm just, I got the spine of an 80-year-old man right now, so <laughs> I can't fucking move too well. Like, yeah, I've had that since I was 10. <laughs> so. I have a little problem with some herniated discs, discs right now. Oh, that sucks, man. What did, you, did you do something to fuck them up, or did they just, was it just oh, one I don't of know, Maybe uh, being a caddy at 12 years old where you're carrying around fucking 100 pounds of uh, someone else's golf bags <laughs> probably crushed my spine, and now <laughs> that I'm an older guy it's it's coming back to haunt me that sucks man yeah that really sucks dude to that or, or all the fucking pounding running up and down a basketball court or i was a runner i was everything i was still trying to stay in shape but it's getting harder and harder oh my god <clears throat> who's on the phone though i meet you kaku hey you know Ooh. about the birds you hear this whole thing the about the birds falling out of the sky there and uh Arkansas. Something about uh, the birds. They fell out of the sky. Fell out of the sky. <laughs> pretty much. You don't know? <laughs> yeah, they, uh, the birds. They the were birds. flying and they, uh, and they fell out of the sky. They fell down there. No one has any clue. Uh, <laughs> just sit back and watch. There's a bunch of theories. <laughs> we'll get to your silliness in a minute. we got serious stuff to discuss right now. <laughs> Dr. Michu Kaku. Michu Kaku. Hello. Hello, Dr. Kaku. It's always a pleasure when we have you on our show, sir. Okay. And by the way, Dr. Kaku has a book out. It's Physics of the Future, How Science Will Change Daily Life uh, by 2100. That's, uh, you know, the year, 2100. Yeah, but the problem with the book, sir, you have a flying car on the cover. That's never going to happen. By the year 2100, I think you're going to be very wrong. Really? You can yeah. trust all the people with a fucking car in the sky? We already have flying cars, except they're very expensive. Yeah, they're called airplanes. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have real flying cars. I did a Discovery Channel program. We filmed the flying car. I saw that it's thing. It's very with expensive. The... And yes. It will go down over the decades. And we are talking about projecting to the year 2100. Yeah, that's pretty far. Yeah, but you got, you're talking about uh, people trying to, like, navigate into Manhattan without hitting buildings? Yes. Uh, we're talking about super magnets using superconductivity. Okay, now you're showing me a thing. Technology that uh, we will harness in the coming decades. You know, so, yeah. so we're going to take the trust out of the flying car equation. Um, yeah, it's a question of economics. You know, like right. jet packs. You know, jet packs are also possible today, except they're just very expensive. It's got an old school phone. I know. Why do you uh, have an old school phone, sir? That's just his ringtone. Oh, I'm sure of it. <laughs> okay, has to be. <laughs> Dr. Kaku's there with an old one of those black phones with a curly wire going there. <laughs> Hello. Uh, well, Dr. Kaku, let's get right into this. A uh, lot of controversy over the past week or so with these birds flying, uh, falling out of the sky. Right. Uh, we think we have the smoking gun. We think we know what's happening here. Oh. First of all, you have the, um, the red-winged blackbird, which flies in very tight formation, unlike other birds, which spread out. Be you follow the leader. Watch this. And if the leader uh-huh. gets disoriented because uh-huh. of fireworks, thunderstorm, lightning, microbursts, or whatever, then the whole flock could commit mass suicide. Wow. Just like lemmings. When the lead lemming goes off a cliff, you yeah. have hundreds of thousands of lemmings that commit mass suicide. Uh, the red-winged blackbird's eyesight is rather poor. They're flying at night. They get disoriented. And the lead uh, bird maybe makes a nosedive right into the ground or right into a house. And they the all just follow suit. Well, they That's picked right. the wrong lead bird then. Wow. That's right. The mass suicide. Now, believe it or not, 
These events take place every other year in the United States. Sixteen recorded incidences over the last 30 years involving over 30 blackbird, uh, 1,000 blackbirds at a time. So these mass die-offs happen every other year, except they don't attract media attention. Uh, this time it did because we have simultaneous uh, die-offs of fish and pelicans now and, and birds in Sweden. And, uh, however, it is largely a coincidence that all these events are taking place pretty much at the same time. Yeah. The, the one problem I have, you said every other year. Why is this happening only every other year? Approximately, on average, 16 events over the last 30 years, averaging about every other year. Of course, it's not like clockwork. We're talking mm. about animals. Oh, okay, I got you. But animal die-offs do take place uh, rather regularly, but they never make the national media. Yeah, you see, now it this did. did. This what? did, and, and it got all hyped up, and uh, the press uh, made like a frenzy out of it. Right, a feeding frenzy with the Internet. Imagine that. Wires Why would they do up. that? People thought it was yeah. government secret yeah. experiments. Right. Uh, yeah, saucers or whatever. Well, you the got the harp uh, project. You got the conspiracy people <laughs> saying, you know, it's chemtrails. It's uh, yeah, like Ann said, the harp project. Yeah, but it's just yeah. it, it is what it is. You got a lead bird that gets confused, and then there's a mass suicide. See that? Happening. That's what we Jeez. were thinking, Doctor Kako. I also want to ask you about chemtrails. Wait, wait, before versus we, contrails. Before we do that, I'm sorry, because uh, stay with oh, the yes, animals yes. for a second. Uh, the the fish dying. Yeah. The, we think we know what's happening there. Uh, there are three possible culprits. Uh, one is chemical poisoning, one is pathogens or disease, and third is trauma. And you can rule out chemical poisoning because 95% of the fish that died in Arkansas were of one species, ah. bottom-feeding drumfish. If it was a chemical poisoning, you get several species being uh, dying off. So fucking smart. However, it smart. takes about a month to culture tissue to make sure that it is disease. So disease is the number one uh, culprit, we think, in the mass die-off of 100,000 mm. uh, drumfish um, you know, off the coast of Arkansas. Yeah. What would uh, trauma be, doctor? You said trauma. Uh, right. Yeah, well, for example, um, in the oceans, we have the Navy using high-powered sonar. Some people think that disorients the whales. And you have mass beaching of whales, which is, you know, rather unusual. Mm. But these mass beachings of whales usually take place in the vicinity of sonic tests uh, by our, our, our subs. And so the, the Navy, as a precaution, is now restricting some of its sonar tests so that we don't uh, disorient um, animals oh, in, in the ocean. Okay. Whales. Yeah. yeah. It's in a way of our military. And then they die in the beach like that. So now you know? we've explained the birds and the fish. And now, yeah, Ed wants to know, I don't about, know about this con contrail versus uh, chemtrail. Have you heard about the chemtrails that people are talking about? Uh, you mean that launching of an object off the coast of Los Angeles uh, just about uh, two months ago? No, but we could talk about that, too. <laughs> uh, no. yeah, well, that was probably not an ICBM. It was probably not a rocket. Yeah. It was probably an airplane. Right. Believe it or not. And the reason for that is that if you look at the velocity of that object taking off the, the, the off Los Angeles, it didn't accelerate. If it was a ballistic missile, it would be accelerating out to about 15,000 miles per hour. Mm. And it didn't accelerate at all. It was at constant velocity. And it also executed mid-course maneuvers. Uh, ballistic missiles execute minor maneuvers, not large maneuvers. Yeah. So we tend to think it was an airplane. And, you know, if you live next to an airport... <laughs> You see these, uh, you see these trails of water vapor all the time. Yeah, yeah. See, it's not chemicals. It's uh, you know, God. it's contrails. It's water vapor. Right. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. I want to, I want to believe in conspiracies because the real no. answers are too boring. The we always more fun. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are more fun, uh, Dr. Yes. Michu Kaku, whose new book is called Physics of the Future, a book I certainly will read. I like I'm that. Excited. Uh, Coming what? out in March. Coming what, out in March. Good. What are some uh, What are some of the things we're going to look forward to in the year twenty one hundred? Uh, well, something that we're going to have within maybe ten years' time. I would say the internet will, will be, be so compact it'll be in your contact lens. Contact lens. Contact what if we lens. don't wear them. You miss uh, out. Well, you know, if you have the internet in your contact oh, lens, uh, you'll be you able to buy see some. anyone's face. When you mm -hmm. talk to somebody, you'll see the complete biography uh, right next to their face. Uh oh. And you'll see subtitles. Uh, subtitles if they speak in Chinese or German. Oh, wow, that's uh, okay. Your contact like lens that. will translate on the fly uh, what the person is saying and put it right underneath that person's face as you talk to that person.
If you're an artist, you'll be able to recreate any kind of sculpture with your hands just by waving your hands in, in space. And your contact lens will then create uh, this image of a beautiful work of art that you're creating. Mm. Architects will love this because architects will be able to create buildings and rooms and furniture just in the contact lens by waving their hands. Doctor, I already I already see all these things when I talk to people. Does that mean there's something wrong with me? <laughs> well, there's a theory that says yes. And, um, in addition, biography. Uh, if you are a student taking a final examination, these contact lens could save your life. How so? Because you'll be able to see the exam answers in your contact lens as you take the final. Well, I bet they'll say no contact lenses uh, during That's the final. Right. <laughs> well, how yes. does it tell? They'll have to pop that out. Um... <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about things that are going to be around in 2100 because we're not going to be around. I want to know what's going to happen in our life. Well, he was just saying that's like 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. That's a 10-year thing. Okay. The Internet's a biggie. I like, uh, you know what, I really like Dr. Kako with all the uh, information that's available now right at our fingertips with our various smartphones. Uh, where are these going to be headed in the next few years? Well, we, we sort of know the answer. The future of the computer is pretty much disappear. <laughs> Uh, it'll be everywhere what? and nowhere. Oh. Uh, the wallpaper, for example, will be intelligent. So when you put wallpaper up, you'll be putting up computers. It's already uh, more intelligent than some of the people. Who, we have working for us, Dr. Cockman. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Fle flexible computer screens already exist. And yes. And they're going to get cheap enough so that we'll be able to, you know, uh, use wallpaper, which is intelligent. So the next time you want a wall screen, you just talk to the wall, and there's your wall screen. You want to redecorate the house, you simply talk to the wall, and the house redecorates itself. Talk to changes the wall. Color, changes changes the color, right. So it would be just a, um, a, t a TV screen virtually. Wow, how cool And, and then be. you could change yeah, your, the... Your entire wall, basically a gigantic TV screen. Can you make it into a jungle theme? You could. What? <laughs> Can you make your wall into a jungle theme by just talking to it? Well, yeah, anything you want. Um, even glass will be intelligent. Uh, we have intelligent glass already in the laboratory. So as you look out the window, if you don't like what you see, you can simply change what you see. Could we do and that to an engineering studio uh, room off of our main studio? If we don't like what we see, we can just tint it so we don't have to look at it. Can I do that to the uh, faces of the women I sleep with? <laughs> yeah, well, now you can change it to be anything you want. Uh, you simply talk to the glass, and intelligent glass already exists. Uh, we have uh, PC screens that are totally transparent. Mm -hmm. And as you talk to the window, you can pretty much change it into anything you want. Oh, so the point here is that computer power is going to be so cheap and so plentiful that mm -hmm. everything around us will be intelligent, maybe except us. I think, I think it's pretty yes. obvious that within a few years, uh, entire walls are going to be TVs. Uh, it could be, right? Because the, the, the cost of computers drops by half every 18 months. Right. So if mm. you simply extend this out to 10 years, uh, computers would be 1,000, 10,000 times cheaper than they are now. Yeah, but the TV is getting bigger and more affordable. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're going to see uh, ridiculous TVs in everyone's places. Well, Max, yeah, in fact, uh, even, your, even your clothing is going to be intelligent. Oh, uh, if you wow. have a heart attack today, you know, you can just die on a lonely country road. In the future, your clothes will upload your entire biography, uh, medical history, call an ambulance, and uh, locate your position by GPS, all if you are unconscious. Just don't so wash never, it. You'll never die alone. <laughs> oh, it's like OnStar in your shirt. That's pretty cool. Hey, That's right, you'll have a doctor in your clothing in the future. I don't like that. Hey, we want to ask about um, another thing that happened very recently, the weather machine. I think it was in the desert of Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Is yeah. That, was that real or was that some some fake newspaper or whatever? Well, there's no such thing as weather modification. That is maybe 100 years into the future. But they said they made it rain 50-something um, times in the desert. Uh, well, I've been to Abu Dhabi several times, and I tell you, the desert is well, dry there. <laughs> and if they could make it rain, they would make a lot of money. But I tend to doubt that story. <clears throat> ah, he tends okay. to doubt that then. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any real proof. I you like would think that. they would have had video of it if they're making it rain in the desert, right? Hey, Doctor, look, you know, the, the CIA tried very hard during the Vietnam War to modify the weather during the monsoon season in Vietnam. They yeah. failed. If the uh. CIA can't do it. Wait, did you know this, Ant, during the Vietnam War? They were trying to. How, how did they? I was try involved in it, Opie. By iodide ice crystals, by seeding the clouds, they hoped to induce the monsoons over the Viet Cong, so that the Viet Cong guerrillas would be washed out. Just got them mad. And so they tried to uh, use that as a military weapon, basically, and they failed.
Yeah. Oh, wow. Apparently, Lex Luthor was running the Vietnam War. <laughs> Lex Luthor. <laughs> Mr. Luthor. Uh, Luthor. I, did, did you yeah. see, Dr. Wow. Kaku, did you see this coming with computers uh, really pretty much getting rid of the typical tower-based computer in your house? Uh, did, did you see this coming where, where it would be really at your fingertips in these uh, smartphones? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I wrote a book called Visions uh, in the late 1990s where oh. I predicted what's going to happen by the year 2010, 2020, 2030, and we're right on schedule. Uh, if you read my book, um, the predictions I made are right on schedule. Really? Of computer power. We have guy. Moore's Law. We can predict with very good accuracy how powerful and how cheap computers are going to be the, because the prices drop every 18 months. You know what? But there is the human factor in there that's very hard to... Um, to factor into something like that. I understand working with numbers and knowing that uh, the computer prices will drop and the technology gets better over a, a, a fixed rate uh, that you guys can pretty much predict. But there's the human factor of what we wanted. Now, what I wanted back in the 90s was a big computer, a big monitor, uh, all that stuff, not knowing that in, in a few years I would want a very small <laughs> handheld computing device like my iPhone and my television being a flat screen on the wall is now turning more into a hybrid of my computer and my television with the likes of things like Apple TV and Netflix and right. uh, uh, all the other ways to deliver the media to, to my house. See, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, in fact, uh, I'm John not a von scientist. Neumann, the, mm -hmm. the mathematical genius who helped to create the electronic computer, he made three predictions in the 1950s about the future of his invention. All three predictions were wrong. Oh, really? He said that only governments would be able to afford computers. Mm -hmm. Second, that computers would be so fantastic we can uh, uh, compute the weather. And uh, third, uh, computers will only be controlled by, you know, by, by the elites and uh, by, by small groups of people. Now we know that computers, instead of becoming bigger, became smaller, more powerful, and that weather prediction is still impossible with a computer. Yeah, so it's 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 wrong. gotten a little more accurate, but they still don't know. I love that they they get on and still just don't know. Uh, they have to guess and say we think if the weather takes this track that we'll get this amount of snow. You would think by now it would be an exact science. Uh, yeah, but we have something called chaos theory. Uh, I know that I say, hey, we all saw Jurassic Park. Right. <laughs> the and drip the of water basically says that when you have very large numbers of molecules and large numbers of particles it's extremely difficult to predict in fact a modern computer is it's impossible to exactly predict the weather mm. uh, you can only predict general features uh, qualitative features not quantitative features right so chaos theory means that the stock market uh the weather uh, the coast of a seashore uh, these are things which are rather unpredictable, even with our best computers. Mm. I just so read a modification is going to be beyond our control for quite a while. I just read a bunch of stuff online about butterfly effect mm -hmm. and yes, chaos yeah. theory. I just wanted to say those. They, I, I, I did because so I feel like I know something. <laughs> did you? What did you think about it, Joe DeRosa? Uh, I thought the movie was a poor representation of the theory <laughs> and the effect. <laughs> We have a movie critic here. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I think that stuff's really interesting, uh, the theory of everything. I was reading about the theory of everything. Yeah, that's or, what I do for a living. Yeah, I'd say that's his it's job. incredibly complex. But uh, actually, Doctor, is there a book you can recommend? I mean, I would like to read some of your stuff, but, you know, it's well, even reading it on Wikipedia is confusing. I mean, it's, is there a book that kind of... Yeah, well, get a copy of my book, Hyperspace. Okay. Uh, it was a national bestseller when it came out. It's the first major book on string theory and the theory of everything. Oh, my God. I can't read about string, string theory. String theory is fascinating, <laughs> uh, but I find you have to read the same paragraph I, like a million three times. or four times before you know what yeah, the hell. I could barely read about string cheese <laughs> and understand I mean, I, I it. It's one of those, <laughs> from, from it's one of those books where you feel your brain exploding yes. in front of your eyes. Yes, Dr. Kaku, Sorry, I, Dr. I, I do you're, understand that. It's, it's very, it, it is a concept, unless you're you or uh, one of your colleagues, it's very hard for the layman, even when it is put in what you people think of as layman's terms, uh, very hard to wrap your mind around it, even if you understand the words. You know, you, you know well, what I mean? You know, if you understand music, uh, you can understand string theory. Here it is. Oh, is boy. Here's the analogy for the dummy. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> Dr. Kaku, how is music like a string theory? Uh, because everything you see around you is basically the lowest octave of tiny little vibrating strings. Uh, electrons, protons, neutrons, they're nothing but the lowest octave. 
Uh, the mm -hmm. next higher octave is dark matter, which we find in outer space, which is invisible. Uh, but we represent, uh, you know, representing by electrons, neutrons, protons, are nothing but little tiny vibrating strings vibrating in the lowest octave. Vibrating. So, See, uh, I chemistry still... is something with the melodies you can play on these strings. What? The universe is a symphony of strings. The universe I, yeah. is a symphony of strings. And the mind of God that Albert Einstein eloquently wrote about would be cosmic music resonating through 11-dimensional hyperspace. All that right. I, finally, God. it's spelt out I, in a way I could uh, Now grasp. I can understand. I can wrap my mind around that. I learned about, I seriously learned about this stuff what? from listening to Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa used to talk about this a lot. Like, Did he used he? to talk about like the great vibration and everything was a musical note and music was the was the thing that defined everything. Yeah, he he should have been talking about his prostate. I know. Got that checked out. <laughs> Might still be around. Why do you ignore oh, that? Yeah. There was a lot to talk about there. Prostate wow. was made out of music. Oh, I had something I wanted to talk to Dr. Kaga. I wanted to ask him another question. The aluminum? It's so, no, And no. other things that the None government that is stuff. doing? No? Just cool, like, uh, yeah, physics stuff. Futuristic and, stuff. Uh, uh, space and... Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, my mind so full of things right. that just oozes out my well, ears. have we covered it all? Is there something else happening in the world that we should cover, uh, Michu, Kaku? Uh, yeah, in the coming months, uh, we're going to discover not just one, but perhaps dozens of Earth-like twins in outer space. Planets, perhaps, with oceans, liquid oceans. Oh. And this is the Kepler satellite currently orbiting the, uh, orbiting the Earth right now, which is going to lock on to to small Earth-like planets in outer space. And that's going to give us an existential shock. Uh, at night, when you look at the night sky, you'll realize that uh, in many of the familiar constellations, there are planets that look very much like the Earth. And we'll wonder whether or not anyone's looking back at us, wondering whether or not Earth has any life on it. Yeah, isn't a bitch we can't just kind of, you know, span that gap and, and, and really kind of check out other, other beings? It's frustrating. Yeah. Frustrating. And again, this is going to be in the next few months. Uh, the Kepler satellite has been orbiting around for over a year and getting uh, evidence of hundreds of large planets. But now we hope to get zero in on small planets, uh, Earth-like planets. And then the question is, is there any life on these planets? Yeah. Uh, we're going to then zero in on radio emissions and see whether or not any of these planets emit radio. It's kind of embarrassing when we were growing up. We were told there were how many planets? I even forgot the number. Nine. nine. There are nine. 500 planets now we've discovered in Odyssey. 500, which we means were told, it's 5 million. We were told there were nine in our own solar system. Um, yeah, but they pretty much said nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, they, we weren't okay. talking about other solar systems. They're like, no, there's pretty much one solar system and it has nine planets. That's sort of what we learned growing up. Yeah. But now, we, now we've identified over 500 solar systems in outer space. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is ridiculously arrogant to be like, I'm going to recreate the entire solar system with these styrofoam balls. <laughs> this yeah, is all like, of it. <laughs> that's what we did. That's all it is. All yeah. you need to know about will never go further than this. <laughs> Here you <Yes>. go, teach. <laughs> Dr. Kaku, I, I yeah. want to ask you an Einstein uh, question. Okay. Uh, I was watching a program the other day, and, of course, it's, uh, I, I love uh, Einstein and his uh, famous theory of relativity and um, traveling at the speed of light and how it is right. not attainable because mass increases right. as we approach the speed of light, and it would become it. impossible to power something uh, past a certain speed. Right. Um, all I could think of is, what's this crazy-haired guy uh, telling everybody this, and all of a sudden it's it's law. Like, how does he know? And how did he know? And why is it so? Um, uh, why is it the law now that everybody accepts? Well, first of all, we measured every single day. Uh, your GPS system, for example, would go bonkers if Einstein was wrong. Uh, really? Pentagon generals have to be briefed on Einstein's theory of relativity, or else they cannot fight a war. Uh, we're talking about atomic bombs, GPS, uh, your iPod, this phone conversation. All oh. of it is a direct consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity. Thank God for that guy. A modern society <laughs> would collapse uh, if it wasn't for the contributions of Einstein. So relativity is tested every single microsecond. We test uh, relativity. Now, I, I, I understand relativity is easy to kind of grasp, uh, uh, things being relative. Uh, to other things. I, I understand that. It's this concept. <laughs> what? Well, it is. Things being relative. Just, I understand relativity, you know, things being, being relative, relative to other things. <laughs> no, I, I, I take into consideration relativity on a daily basis. I do think about things relative to my car. 
uh, being uh-huh. inside the car and outside the car. Right. There's a relationship yeah, well, to the speed of the vehicle, the speed of things outside my vehicle, and the relativity. Like if somebody's behind me and they're doing the same speed I'm doing, relative to me, we might as well be parked. Mm-hmm. Right. And but, also, time is relative. So yes. So it's a different race throughout the universe. Not if you do a radio show. Faster on the moon. <laughs> Some days are longer than others. <laughs> but, yeah, yes. faster on the moon than it does on the Earth. Yeah, I um, wish so this the show was on the moon. Show, uh, sure. Last month, and they have a big moon in the background of the TV set. And I told Conan that time beats faster on that moon uh, than on the Earth. And oh. time beats slower on Jupiter than it does on Earth. Ah. So time is also relative. And, and this is because of, is this because of mass? Uh, because of gravity, uh, large gravity uh, speeds up. That's what I meant by mass. Weak gravity <laughs> slows down time, and I yes. think we measure this with our satellites. Uh, GPS would go bonkers if it wasn't for. Now, this. why though, as an object approaches the speed of light, does it gain more mass? This seems to me uh, something I cannot grasp. Well, first of all, the energy is being turned into mass. That's why it gets heavier. Oh. And the exact equation of the energy turning into mass is E equals mc squared. Yes. That is precisely how much mass is accumulating as you go faster and faster and faster. So the very fact that we have hydrogen bombs is a consequence of E equals mc squared. Ah. It's a consequence of the fact that your kind speed of, of energy, energy turns into mass. You get heavier. E equals at mass, the right. speed of light squared. Yeah. Right. And that, oh, so the energy itself is converted to mass. That's right. That's so right. then the more energy you need to move this mass is creating more you mass. You got it. Holy got Jesus, it. Dr. Kaku. That's right. Oh, yeah, I have, it. you have just, it, I think Anthony well, missed his calling. This is a moment for me. That most people have had it in the 50s. Oh, no. All right, Danny, stomp on my parade or rain on it. Stomp on my parade. <laughs> Blow on my parade. Oh, Dr. Kaku, no, believe me. What happened? It, it, it is, uh, thank you. I finally got a grasp on it. All right. Well, why don't we let the good doctor yes, go? Yes, after that, where else are we going? Dr. Certainly. Kaku, thank you so much. Okay. Physics of the future, how science will change and daily life by the year 2110. Right. Out and, in March. And I also believe you do a show for XM, don't you, sir? Uh, well, I do a show for the Science Channel. Yes. Uh, Sci-Fi Science. I'm the host. Uh, I love that so. show. No, we know that, but I, I thought you were heard on XM from time to time. A little radio. Uh, uh, on this show. Uh, I'm on talk radio. I have, I'm on uh, 130 radio stations around the country. Uh, commercial Stop radio Reagan. stations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talk radio. I got 130 shows. Hey, that's uh, very good. And I love, I love your uh, show on uh, Science Channel. It's, it's, it's a amazing. Lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everything about time travel, uh, lightsabers, ray guns. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald Ray Guns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great right. show. <laughs> great show because he just makes up stuff. I love it's that. It's great. Yeah. No accountability. He just really. theories. It's right. great. <laughs> Must be nice to be the smartest man in the room. You it can just really say whatever is. you want. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, my God. All right, uh, pal. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much, Dr. Cox. Yes, yes. There he goes. All right. Uh, and- wow, talk about theory of relativity. What the fuck is going on there? Holy Where did that picture shit. come from? Uh, your sister just posted an old picture of you oh, my about, sister about should 30 be, seconds ago. should be <laughs> shot that for that. Adam Ferrara? Yeah, oh, yeah it is. Me, me, pals me and on. Adam Ferrara. No shit. Adam Ferrara looks the same. Anthony looks like the big ragu. <laughs> <laughs> that is the chillin fantastic. Wow. Yeah, that's me and Adam before we did anything. Holy shit. But, Anthony, we can talk about the picture, but right after the Dr. Michu Kaku, kind of a new bit we want to start doing yes is the dr steve rebuttal oh shit dr Dr. steve Steve hates dr well let me tell you something i had an epiphany right there with uh michio kako yeah and uh dr steve knows a little bit about physics right dr steve intelligent wallpaper i I can't wait to the future (laughs) (laughs) what's what's the problem you're not a fan of the intelligent (laughs) wallpaper theory i don't know that seems somewhat of a mundane application of what could be cool. I could just see some housewife cleaning off some kid that crayoned over the intelligent wallpaper, <laughs> yeah. spraying fantastic on it and ruining yeah. the screen. So the, basically the entire future is just designed to make some fat-ass housewife not have to work anymore? Yeah, That's it. yeah. That's it. And it would be nice uh, for a maybe young future Anthony 
to see virtual spaghetti and meatballs and sauce running down the wall after Dad (laughs) virtually throws it at the wall in an argument. Instead of the actual uh, spaghetti and meatballs, it could be just an image on the intelligent wallpaper. If that's the worst, the connect. You you make the motion. (laughs) Connect wallpaper where Dad throws the spaghetti, but he still has to literally hit Mom. Yeah. Do you think she'll have a virtual black eye (laughs) that you can just wipe away? She'll look normal until she looks into the wallpaper, and then Dad will be like, see, if you want to look like that for real. <laughs> oh my God! He uh, so you didn't you didn't dig the uh, yeah the, uh, the wallpaper. intelligent wallpaper. What else? What uh, about flying cars uh, is, based on this is your rebuttal? Yeah, well, the uh, well, here's the thing with the flying cars. Mm. We have to, if we're going to truly do this, if we need a room temperature semiconductor. Now they're coming very close to um, having one, but you still have to immerse the the ones that we have now. Uh, in liquid nitrogen. Very Before cold. that, you had almost to be at absolute zero. So they're getting closer. Whether just speaking of absolute big... zero, do you hear the E Rock segment? He's <laughs> 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 uh, shaking his head. He thought he was off the hook. Uh, oh, E Rock. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th- you gotta you gotta take the human element out of the flying car equation. Of course. See, and, but then it becomes because... public transportation that flies. It's called an airplane. Yeah, I mean, to have true freedom in a flying car would be insane. People if you think about fuck it. up in two dimensions right. too much every day. Right. Never no, mind no, adding no. altitude. But sure. don't you also have to, doctor? Have room in three dimensions, though. So there's, uh, you know, it may actually be less likely that you'll run into somebody. It's much more mm-hmm. likely when you're oh, really? behind one little road. Just imagine yeah. the commute into New York. The thousands and thousands of fucking cars in the sky. You really, yeah. there's not going to be any problems. Will there be lanes? Because then there's just traffic again. Yes. Then it's if just traffic in the lanes, sky. Why would you have lanes? If they, if they have lanes in the sky, it would look like Coruscant from Star Wars. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I want it to look like. You geek. I love it. <laughs> Doctor. I love it. Doctor, to Opie's point, though, don't you have to consider, like, what, what Opie's saying about, like, you know, they can't, people wouldn't be able to, to handle flying cars. When you, t- when you predict or theorize on what's going to happen in the future, don't you have to also incorporate the concept that, that our understanding and capability with these, with these progressions will be higher? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, we'll have a greater understanding of something like a flying car in a hundred years and how to use it versus if it just popped up now. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it it, it does make sense. I think ultimately they'll it'll be computer controlled, and the problem with that is is what happens when the computer crashes. Then you've got a million people in the sky and they're all falling to their doom. Oh, oh god! But that can happen agree. now with the airlines, uh, aren't they? Computer operated duck. Well, no. the- no, yeah. not really. I mean, there's not a single computer system that's making all these. It works his whole life. <laughs> Joe just goes, guy works his whole life. He's got to take this shit. I know. Guy actually went to school, got an education, becomes a doctor. I've been and in... he's just shit on by Opie. <laughs> I've been in JetBlue planes. They're already uh, very uh, computer uh, savvy. But at least yeah, the, the, yeah, the got pilot, nothing but flat screens in front of him now. The professional Yo. pilot <laughs> element is still there. He still has basic gauges if all that shit fails. Oh, really? Uh, like on the ground. Where's the yoke? When you, know, you have nothing but flat screens in front of you and they break down. No, he's got he's got a yoke yeah, in front no, of him. I've never seen a yoke. Yeah. Sometimes they got the joystick on the side, too. Yeah. They don't even have a yoke. They got a little joystick on some of those planes. But uh, you still have the human element that if the plane is still running uh, and all the ground shit is is out... He could still land the plane. Now, a flying car, if we were just dependent on computers because the people are too stupid to even drive regular cars, not my flying ones, right. so that they're completely computer um, run and you just kind of mm. sit in it, uh, then we're asking for trouble. Not really, because the computers will be better at that point. I think so, but then we'll be asking for With trouble more if computers. the computer fucks up. True. Uh, you but know. that's what I was saying earlier. you got to take into account we're going to have a 100 more years of understanding to us. I don't... Do you know what I mean? It would be like yeah, throwing a guy into a flying car today. Or a guy How from, much fun would that be, though? <laughs> it would be awesome. Or how about, <laughs> I'd love to see that. But how about throwing a guy from, like, the 1500s into a Ferrari today? 
Like, that would kind of be, he crashed the thing in a second. Yeah, yeah, that's what so I'm saying. So you're, you're thinking, like, if we, you know, yeah. in the future we'll probably be able to deal with that shit, our brains will be That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Equipped. Like, if you went, no, no, no. if you showed Ben Franklin <laughs> yeah. an iPod, excuse right. me, doctor, let me theorize here for a second. Ben if Franklin. You, if you showed Ben Jimin Franklin an iPod. He'd say, big shit, do you know I couldn't look at these if I didn't invent these glasses, right. motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. That's what he'd say. He'd probably have a stroke. He'd be like, you know what I mean? He doesn't, he, he, he yeah. didn't sit through the stair step of technology to get to the eye. You know uh, what where I mean? Is the pornography, sir. Yeah. That's what he'd be. He was quite the ladies' man, that Ben Franklin. Yeah. That's he why loved, he was bald like he that. He loved the pussy. Oh, he yeah. loved the, uh, Especially he, if it was French. He used to go to France all the time. You know what it was like to go to France? You got to get on a ship. And I fucking know. maybe make it there just for that French pussy. Yeah. That guy loved it. He sacrificed getting scurvy to the get some scurvy. fucking twat. He had syphilis, <laughs> didn't he? Oh, they did he all die did. from but syphilis? Everyone, they all, everyone did. Who didn't Ugh. have syphilis back uh, in those days, Dr. That Steve? That was like the common cold. Was that very uh, common, Dr. Steve? I don't know if you know that, but was it back then in the day, as they call it? Yeah, um... There were quite a few uh, famous people that had syphilis back in the day. And, uh, yeah, we just didn't have a treatment for it. So if mm. you fucked around and, uh, you know, it was easy to spread. And, oh, uh, my God. Let's I see. Uh, uh, Scott Joplin had syphilis. Uh, Gauguin, the painter, had syphilis. Gauguin. So, you know, those are the yeah. Things. Al Capone. Well, Al Capone, right. yeah. Al Capone died of it. Uh, Idi Amin had syphilis. Idi Amin? Jesus. Yeah, I would, I would, I would just say yes. Yeah. Didn't Mother okay. Teresa have it? Mother Teresa <laughs> had the clap. She had chlamydia. She had chlamydia. <laughs> I would, ass- I would assume she had the Hep A. She had Hep A. <laughs> the Hep A. <laughs> Doctor C, what do you know? You kill uh, old people for a living. Oh Why no, he doesn't. He, uh, he, helps uh, he, he helps them. He uh, helps them and uh, gives them comfort in their yeah, last. Does days. He, he makes their last that, week feel terrific as great. they take that uh, ride over the horizon. Horizon to the unknown, the exactly. boat ride. He puts when, he puts the fucking silver dollars on their eyes. We know what the ride and, over. and gives them the change for the ferryman. We, we know what the ride over the horizon is. Fucking Doctor Steve knows the ferryman by his first name. <laughs> Just talking. Yeah, I got another one for you. The thing <laughs> from Crash of the Titans. Yeah. Anything a quarter or two. And the ride over the horizon is a nice steep cliff, right, Dr. Steve? Is? Yes. Dr. Right. Steve's never seen a, a spirit come out of anyone. Have you ever felt? Uh, a weird feeling when someone passes, that uh, uh, an electric feeling, anything? No, but it is interesting, the, uh, the, the the line between being alive and being dead, because, you know, someone is right close to death, but they still are animated. And uh, when they pass away, it's it's just not that person isn't there anymore. It is, it's, um, it's really a, I, it's hard to put into words, but it, it is, well, why don't you try? I think I think of it as unplugging the microwave while, when it's spinning around. Uh, yeah. Like it's alive, it's moving, it's cooking something, and then it's just not. So, <laughs> That's yeah. what I think it is, too. Who's that Blackness po- and nothingness. Who's that politician in the 80s that, that killed himself during the press conference? Oh, Arba Dwyer. Bar Dwyer. Did you ever watch yeah. that footage? It's, it's oh, disturbing yeah, yeah. to watch how instantaneous the life is gone. Yeah, he's it's really just... creepy. Yeah. God. What do you think God. happens when you die, Doctor? Do you believe anything afterwards or nothing, right? Well, I mean, you know, there's the part of me that grew up a Methodist, and uh, so I, you know, I, I have that in my worldview. It's a Methodist uh, to his so madness. The whole theology <laughs> stuff. But then, Ow, you know, man. the scientific part of me is, there, you know, does struggle with that. <laughs> and is now, it? But now, I've, there is a, a certain form of immortality, though, uh, in an infinite universe. Uh, we would have counterparts elsewhere in the universe that are exactly like us because in an infinite universe, if, uh, if you take a small volume of space, that, you know, there's a finite number of particles. Did you guys hang up on me again? No, no, no. no we're, you're, you're, that's it's actually, hilarious. it's actually interesting what you're saying. Because that's hilarious. I, that is so funny. It's like, did you hang up on me again? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> He's so paranoid. Was, Why are you so paranoid? That is so funny. I was, well, uh, continue, because continue, because it's very. Interesting. I was digging that because it's like if something's infinite. Yeah. What you're saying is, if it's infinite, there is definitely. It's not even questionable. It's definite that there will be exact duplicates of things. Yes. Yeah, based on infinite, right? Stage or a stage one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, shit. oh, 
you know he's still talking. <laughs> that was a team effort, he's by the way. He's still uh, talking. No, yeah, yeah. And they looked at each yeah, other. We, like, we this huddled, has to happen. We huddled Jesus on that one. We certainly did. Ah, that poor fuck. I hey, uh, <laughs> love Dr. Steve, by Holy the way. Dr. Shit. Steve is the shit. Weird Medicine is his show. It's here on uh, The Virus. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when the next episode is, but uh, I'm Hopefully sure we... never. We pre... No! Next week. Next week, Dr. Steve's Weird Medicine. He's uh, He's really, really good. Uh, on it, he's a great friend, a great pal, and a shitty winemaker. Doctor, and he eats like shit as he tells you you should eat healthy. <laughs> and he played uh, Joseph uh, this past holiday season. Did he? Um, a question for next time. <clears throat> oh, and that was for sleeves. And his wife might have played Mary. Sleeves? In no, what? no. Just wasn't he involved shit. in a sleeves project? Maybe. Sleeves rules. Shut up. You hear the River Rat uh, Doc song yet? Just stop. With sleeves. You hear the River Rat Doc song yet? No. What's that? What is it? What's the know. River Rat Rat Doc? What? That's River Rat Doc oh, on no. Twitter. Oh, no. What happened? I just got oh, a, yeah, we get the text message. I just messages. got a text. Where he writes this all goes, oh, that was really funny, but you know he's really hurting inside it's, as he writes that. <laughs> You fucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the good doctor just said, you fucks. Hey, where's Troy Kwan? Because uh, all uh, of his conspiracies were knocked out of the air like those fucking birds were. Exactly. Where's the Troy Kwan before we go to break? Uh, and Joe DeRosa, where are you going to be? I'm going to be uh, at uh, CB's in the West Village all weekend. And uh, I also have a show every Tuesday night at the Ace of Clubs in Manhattan. It's called uh, Righteous Kill. It's nice. a fun show. Yeah, Ooh. man. It's been too long. Yeah, yeah. Come down, you know. Come hang out, people. Hang out. It's wow. like five bucks, man. And we have we had Bobby Kelly a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna have Keith Robinson, I think, next week. I, I read, I read, uh, I, I follow you on Twitter, and uh, I do have a complaint that I have for a lot of the comics, that I except Jimmy Norton. Uh, you know, plugging the gigs on Twitter, I have no problem with that. But how about a little just extra fun stuff every so often? Yeah, how about a fucking one liner? I'll, I'll bash fucking. You know who I'll bash the most for that? Louis C.K. But he doesn't care. But, not, but but I know. But sometimes Louis just gets drunk and starts going off about Sarah Palin. That's kind of funny. But for the most part, Louis's just like, hey, I'll be here. It's like, you know, the, how about throwing us a little funny something every right, so often? I'm going to tweet right now. Are oh, you going to do that? Yeah. Do something good right now. tweet something good? I'm going to tweet right now. Jimmy was tweeting yesterday how he was flying with old people and how he was bossing yeah. around old people on a plane. It's, it's just, like, Jimmy Isn't it weird? You know what's going on. It is weird. The guys you really want to be tweeting and using Twitter properly just don't. Just don't. I don't. Louis just want. Certainly, is I don't one of mind those. the plugs. Believe me, I know what you guys do. I love it. Whatever. And I even plug things like if I'm, you know, allowed to do a certain thing things. in my house, I would plug it. Uh, but, but you know, I also like basic conversation. I like when someone tweets. Uh, Andy Levy is great with Andy that Levy's shit. Andy Levy is a great. Andy Levy is a great tweeter. What is he on uh, Twitter? Andy Levy. Yeah, I think he just has Andy, Andy Levy. Levy. He's a really he's good on one. Red Eye, yeah. which, uh, by the way, if you tune into Red Eye next Thursday, you will see Anthony Cumia Very on Red good. Eye. You doing I'm it? Doing. Yeah, I've done it for uh, quite a while yeah. now, uh, Joe. Dude, I, uh, I love doing Red <laughs> no, Eye. I didn't no, mean, no, it's fun. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, I think I might be on next Thursday. If you're on Thursday, no, I'm on Monday. I'm on Monday. Ah, ah Joe yeah. DeRosa comedy. What are you tweeting for everybody? Cool. I tweeted Opie and Anthony told me I need to tweet more, so here. Oh, you <laughs> suck. <laughs> That's at least it's something. Look, let's spend New Year's Eve together. Oh, uh, let's see what yeah. else he goes. Uh. Uh, oh wait a minute! You did have to write something. I'm I'm sick, and I'm watching Love Actually. I think my hormones are trying to tell me something. There you You're, go. You, were, you see? Okay, sick tweet. I, you know, maybe I fucking convicted you. I wrongly fucking accused you well, here. Well, what you don't, what you're not reading is the fine print that these tweets are two months apart. I see. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, like, tonight, right? Just kill, right? It's sad. Is it Saturday or Sunday? You, you got to tweet more, Joe. Must be. No, but he. Okay, all right. I still it, like doing it. You're not as bad as I thought you were. Maybe yeah. I just ignore everything but your plugs. Look at that <laughs> nice tweet. My album made top ten albums of the year. Oh, Ooh. that's pretty cool. Ooh. Hey, isn't it odd that we're all up for these um, uh, these tw Twitter awards, these shorty awards? Are we? <laughs> yes. Oh. The, what's, what's Everyone's the nominating us for these well, that's shorty nice awards. What are shorty awards? I don't know. It's some kind of Twitter thing. But uh, I'm, I'm nominated for journalism. And for <laughs> politics. You know, they nominated. I did see that, actually. E Iraq was nominated for food, I swear to God. There's a food <laughs> category. I it swear to God. Stopped. It hasn't stopped. I swear to God. And, and the, and the it's called the Shorty Awards, and I do appreciate everyone uh, legitimately yeah, it's cold. nominating us for stuff. But kind of funny. Jimmy's in there for uh, books, by the way, for books. authors. Yeah. There's Iraq. E 10th place in the food category. 
Uh, I was fourth before. What Fuck, happened? we better oh, move on. up E-Rock Radio, right? Get E-Rock Radio up there. You used to be number one in politics, too. Yeah, I was in there in politics, nice. though. Because, and once guy said he nominates me for politics because I teach him a lot about Hitler and the end people. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Holy the shorty awards are a complete joke, right? <laughs> I, I guess so. Hey, we got Troy. Troy. Didn't Dave win one last Dave, No, no, no he, Dave was, was nominated say. and lost. He lost to somebody who was pretending to be a llama. And lost his In fucking the... mind on stage at the presentation. Live on CNN. Not live on CNN. It was classic fucking Eastside Dave. And he's upset lunatic. because he's trying to win the weird category now. And people are voting all of us for these stupid categories, but not voting for Dave in the weird But category. you know why? Because unfortunately, Dave isn't on the show. He would run away with it. What is he, third for the weird category? <laughs> oh, that's good. Dave, uh, David McDonald, um, Eastside Dave, g- g- vote for him in the weird category. He's beating out the llama. He is beating out the llama. I don't but... even know what these awards, what are these awards? It's, it's, it's for Twitter. It's I, Twitter. I want to be nominated. Any Twitter. Joe DeRosa for uh, plugs. Yeah. Just fucking plugging. Can gigs. I be nominated for plugs? What plugging else can I be gigs. nominated Worst for? Worst Twitterer. Worst Twitterer? Uh, oh, here's the categories. Let's get, let's get a category for you, Joe. How about m- marketing? You, you look like a <laughs> marketing. That would be You good. look like a green guy. Green. I'm the so not at all. The shit I get... Whenever people come over to my place, like for drinks or something, and they're like, "Where do we put our beer cans?" I'm like, "In the fucking trash." In the garbage. You don't know, recycle. No, no, I don't give a shit. It's garbage. It'll end At up in all. landfill. I don't give a shit. How about innovation? I want to be nominated for that. Innovation. I want to be nominated That's for not. That. This all right, good. Joe DeRosa, Anthony. I, breaking news: We got Tom in Madison, Wisconsin, who's going to talk for everybody. Go ahead, Tom. I think Kenny is the fucking best phone screener in the world. I tell you. Anyway, if indeed that was him, I can only envision a giant body with a little hat. But I, I, what are the numbers, guys? I, what, less than 10% of adults have Twitter? Come on, get over it. You, you, uh, I'm dying out here. You're funnier than hell. I like you. But, uh, yeah, push these side days. Twitter and wow, Twitter and, you are all over the place. Yeah, Twitter and Facebook is shit. a nice little uh, side thing that, uh, if you like the show, is kind of fun to do. It is. Yeah. Here's, We're talking to way more people right now than than I'll ever talk to on Twitter. And, and believe me, shit. the demographic of people that he's talking about, he's talking about everyone overall that uses Twitter is only uh, a fraction of the people. But if you're talking about our audience, mm. a lot of them are using but, Twitter. But the thing with Twitter, with the social networking, now it's being hooked up to the Facebook and everything else. So, yeah. so it's kind of just becoming fucking The bottom huge. of every news story has a Twitter right. thing. If you want to Twitter the news story or fucking uh, link it to something, I, it just does I like it. that it, it keeps the show going uh, pretty much 24-7 that at this point. That guy was a, a fucking retard. That's all right. Not, I, well, a lot of, most of the people listening to this right now don't have Twitter. That's true. But the ones that do and they follow us, they have a pretty good time I think it's a it. larger percentage than the overall uh, uh, population. What bothers me about... Our audience is kind of in there. Where did Troy Kwan go? He thought he was off the hook? Yeah, I think he what? did. Oh, right. I thought you left the room. <laughs> no, man. And why you look so fucking mean? No, whatever you're ready for me. Wow, right? did he give you a look, Opie? No, yeah, you, you look mean. Holy fuck. He I is look, giving you a look. You were sitting on the chair, well, Mike, and you were just say like, something. yeah, I'm nope. here. Okay, I'm right. here, motherfucker. Here's Troy Kwan. That's, oh, that's yeah, whenever you're ready for him, just hanging out. Music. <laughs> so, Troy, yo, you had a lot of questions. Yep. You've had a rough week with the Opie and Anthony show, because you're kind of a conspiracy guy. No, not a conspiracy guy. But you like to question things. Sure. Now, Michu Kaku explained a lot of things today. Uh, are you okay with his explanations, or do you feel like we should dig further into uh, the dead birds, the dead fish, and whatnot? Yeah, well, I mean, Michio Kaku is the end-all, be-all. So we should just believe what he says, because oh, he, he wrote a book. Sarcastic. Well, he wrote a book, So, yeah. and he's, he's a, a, a doctor. He's a physicist. So he's a physicist. Yes. So whatever he says has got to be the truth, right? And as, uh, More so, I think, than some... <clears throat> Dumb fucking college puke that thinks uh, there's a conspiracy to everything, right? And says the birds fell out of the sky because of a, a satellite array in uh, I, uh, Alaska. I feel like neither of you really mean what you're saying right now. No, I feel like actually, you're both being very sarcastic. Wouldn't it be weird? I, I think Troy's being very sarcastic. Wouldn't it, it be weird if it was sound know, sarcastic is. but isn't conversation? <laughs> right. We're like, oh yeah, we should just believe everything he says, and he means it. Well, <laughs> we're sarcastic sounding guy. I, 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 okay, oh, wait, you know, you meant what you said. You were calling him a college puke. 
right? Yeah. Is that what's happening? No, no, not you. I was I was just saying these people that... Oh, sorry. I thought you were calling him a No, not him personally. Oh, sorry. I just okay. mean the people that like saying but, everything's a conspiracy. And, and, I see. And, and with the birds thing, it was one species of bird. That's why... Yeah, it would I be... I mean, mm-hmm. if it was something else, there would have been many different species fucking right. dead all over right. the road. Yeah. So a false it make, <laughs> makes it more logical that something happened within the flock. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess. Because there's other birds in the sky, isn't there? Sure. So you still want to believe the, that the chemtrails did it, though? No, I never said the chemtrails did it. No, you said you saw the chemtrails, and, and then, then a couple of days dead. later, the birds are dead. So you went, ah, just saying. No, I. this is what I said. I was in Arkansas. I was driving through. I saw a massive amount of chemtrails, and Contrails. I had tweeted a joke. Yes. Okay? Right. And then a couple of days later, birds are falling out of the sky. It's a conspiracy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, I I'm not here trying to convince you of chemtrails doing it. But did you like no, what no, Michu Kaku had to say? Or, I don't believe in chemtrails. Or you don't <clears throat> buy into his horseshit. He's explained 2012 to us. Dude. He's explained um, the Twin Towers thing no, very well. There's nothing that anybody could say that's going to change my beliefs. What's your belief? And what's and a healthy beliefs? way to live? Well, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that the mainstream media mm-hmm. is corrupt... Yes, and they are, they'll they'll they're lying to us. I believe I believe it's a lot. A conspiracy, conspiracy. So so, I'm just a, a regular fucking dude going about my day, trying right. to live my life, doing the best I can with what I have. Mm-hmm. And it's not like a Springsteen song. <laughs> I'm just a regular dude going through my day, well, what I'm tra- trying Anthony. to get through life with the things I oh. got. Oh, oh, oh. It's just me and Wendy <laughs> listening to the corrupt news, Wendy. <laughs> These chemtrails. Chemtrails over Jersey. <laughs> There's chemtrails over Jersey. What about well, the? Well, we went down what to a... the beach and the boardwalk was full of aliens. <laughs> what about what I didn't know what to do. Oh, 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 oh. What about the the blackbirds, uh, Bruce? Blackbirds dropping from the sky over Jersey. <laughs> I was driving down the parkway, and me and Wendy saw blackbirds dying. <laughs> Hit it, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a regular guy trying to make my way Uh, through life with a corrupt press. (laughs) Well, and by corrupt press, I mean Jews, but I don't want to say Jews. (laughs) You think uh, Michu Kaku is working for the man, Troy? Uh, I mean, if scientists are developing weather... Because there's aluminum (laughs) in the air over Jersey. <laughs> Somebody's putting fluoride in the drinking water again. <laughs> the tower goes into my mouth. It led to the towers being an inside job. Well, I didn't see a plane at the Pentagon. There wasn't an engine, and everyone was gone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can find 500 planets, but we can't find Bin Laden. Something's wrong, people. And where'd that passport come from, Wendy? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try have it. Oh, I'm shit. sorry. Try again. Troy, yeah. no, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't need to try to convince you guys of anything. I mean, whatever. Yeah. You guys believe whatever you want to believe. I don't care. I really don't. Whatever you guys want to believe, whatever helps you sleep at night, believe it. It doesn't help me sleep at night. It well, doesn't why? keep me up at night. Oh. I don't think about it as much. I don't take everything at face value. But for the most part, the path of least resistance um, is probably what happen there you go for mo- for the majority right. of things yeah, you don't, don't have know. to yeah. think that everything had to be this plot and everything is being covered up and i don't and there's this I... grand plan but you kind of do because you're questioning everything sometimes things are just what they are well there you go you convinced me of it i believe this because <laughs> <laughs> there you are you convinced me i, of I it. believe there's some sneaky shit going on but not to the extent you no, think of course no. not and I mean, my, why, my why, issue with you troy is that you have questions with no substance behind it. And I keep encouraging you to come up with some, su- some well, what substance. Well, what do you want substance of? I mean, like, you're, what how, what killed the birds? Let's go right back to what started this whole thing with you. I don't know. I but have no ha- idea. But I'm sure you've been doing your research, no? Well, I know what you know. 
But did you do research and you found some websites that are questionable? And what are they saying? Thermite pain. They're saying, <laughs> they're saying fireworks and uh, lightning. But you're not believing that. Well, well, who cares what I believe? What, what, what do you care what I believe? It's uh, out of curiosity. Oh. No, but I mean, seriously, who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Because like, it's another point of view. That's why. That's what we do in this show. That's why. It's what people do in life. Kind right. of trade ideas. Trade right. ideas. Ever and, since cavemen. And you can go, you're an asshole thing. for thinking what you're thinking. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, you're a fucking asshole for yeah, thinking what you're thinking. Someone drew something and, on a cave wall. And then, someone pointed at it and said, that's bullshit. Right. right. And then every once in a while, yeah. maybe you, you, you learn something from somebody else and you, and it, you exchange a little info. That's all. Yeah. That's well, why I care. I mean, I, I haven't done too much. I know what you know just by looking through what has been printed online. See, I'm not suspicious because it was one uh, species. Right. Because right, there's a right. lot of birds in the sky all the time. So if it was some poisoning or some fucking weapon or something. They some were working fucking... on a poison, though, that just takes out one type of person. Right. And believe me, I... blackbirds, uh? enough said. Enough said. <laughs> That's step one. We all know I they can't be leaders, right, doing. Anthony? Yeah. I understand what they're I, uh... doing. No, but... You know, I like the lightning theory, but then that would have fucked up what I just said to Troy, that other species would have fucking fallen from the sky if it was lightning. Yeah. But fucking meet you, Kaka, with that ex explanation. The lead bird fucked up, and everyone had to do a mass suicide because of it. That yeah. makes perfect sense to me. Just I mean, that science, biologically, that makes something. sense. Their leader goes down. The birds think they're supposed to go down. They're not smart. You see that flock of birds, and you see them flying, and they all turn. They know where to go, and they're all following each other. Yeah. Uh, who's to say? Yeah, one of them doesn't fly into the ground, and they all kind of follow or or enough of them until well, one of them goes hey fuck this <laughs> well isn't that what happens with the whales yeah. one stupid whale thinks he knows what he's yeah. doing and they all follow and they the beach dumb whale. A pod. Right. people a pod do that whales. for christ's sakes yeah people, people do, do that a mob of people being led by somebody will will all commit the same prime example crosswalk when uh yeah. there, there's a, when it's a don't walk but one guy says i can make it and he goes and he can make it Someone else will just step off the curb and what, follow them. Or how about when the guy blindly follows his GPS onto the train tracks or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's another great one. <laughs> I love Don't. when I love when every once in a while you get to drive on the water if you have GPS. That's always fun. Oh yeah, when you're driving, the, well, and the you look down at your GPS and you're like, "Wow, I'm in the middle of the water." Now. I'm in the East <laughs> River. This, this is, is great. Very, what happened? Hey, someone's doing hog today. Hey, what the fuck? She's uh, she's very excited about the snow, you guys. What are you talking about? <laughs> Someone just did a hawk. Someone totally did a hawk. Wait, what is that some about? Bro some broad. They're doing some live dumb thing about the weather, and yeah. some girl ran up from behind with her arms she in the air, just like we were talking about with hawk. That's weird. Could someone find out if that had uh, anything to do with anything? I'm not, I'm not gonna be. It's hilarious. I love. I love the immaturity of just fucking up a live broadcast oh, like that. Yeah. And the guy's got to go, well, she's very excited about the snow. Troy, you just need more substance behind what you're thinking. Oh, that's I gotcha. all. That's fine. That's, that's all. Cool. And yeah, that's man. why I do care. All right, dude. I learn a lot on this show. A shitload. And I also like calling people out on being whatever, but. Well, that's the thing with conspiracy theories, too, is that what you were saying about path of least resistance is probably what happened. It's, yeah. A lot of the time, conspiracy, and I'm not against the conspiracy theory, but a lot of the time, conspiracy theories go against science. Mm. You know, for instance, like with medicine, a doctor will tell you, you know, where you say, well, could I contract, could I contract a sickness this way? This might have happened. This might have happened. This might. The first thing a doctor will say is you're dealing with a lot of maybes right now. You yeah. need to deal with definites. What definitely happened? And then, you know, if you were exposed possibly to something, you know what I mean? Wow. And that's with conspiracy theories. Same thing. It's like it's well, if this happened. And then that would allow for this tentatively to happen, and theoretically, then this could hinge on that. It's you, you get down the line with this with this mousetrap scenario, where it's yeah. like you can't. Right. It's There's just not too likely. many weird maybes and and things that are so hard to happen that the easier things just it's easier that it happened that way. That's all. Sure. That's that's usually my take on it. I believe I believe me. I think there are shenanigans going on all the time, all the time, but. Uh, they get exposed because people are stupid. People talk, mm -hmm. and and when, when it, someone tries to cover something up, it gets exposed. Well, that's the thing does. too. Somebody way up the top of the government ladder that's gonna that's gonna orchestrate some sort of thing that yeah. uh, justifies the conspiracy theory. He's no less of a half -ass, half ass than the average person. That yes. guy's sitting there too, going, "This is gonna be a fucking headache." Are you shitting me? A prime me? example uh. is look at fucking Watergate. And Nixon. Yeah. Everyone tried to cover that shit up, but people opened their mouths.
They left evidence. They left, and that was like a huge cover up. They yeah. tried their best. They really wanted at the top end of the government. Uh, they tried to cover that shit up and yeah. couldn't fucking do it. Yeah, they can't keep the spoilers for the new Spider Man movie secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like that's, yeah, yeah, that, that's me. Shit. It's not the whole deal that conspiracies can't happen. Um, uh, logistically or technically, but it's that dumb ass fucking human element that makes me doubt that conspiracies are so deep rooted. And you, you don't think that there has been cover ups about what is going on in our food, what is going on with um, uh, flu shots? They get exposed. Do they? These I mean, you exposed. know, irradiated. Hold food, on, you, you know, mean things hold like on. that? Hold on, he said, do they? Came out today. Yeah, the, the the vaccinations. Yeah, I got. But I'm no, talking no, about no, no, no. But no one knows. Study uh, linking vaccinations to uh, autism called fraudulent, and okay. that was something that people started buying into, saying, "Holy shit, kids are getting autism because of the the vaccination." There. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is, and they're now proving that was bullshit. When you watch the news, they tell you, "Oh, it's flu season. Go get your flu shots." So guess what everybody does? They go, "Okay, let's go get our flu shots. Got to go down and do it." And then it's like. What are you injecting me with? And the- it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a the guy's trying to make a point, and you just shit on it with that what? production. No, I thought it was the end of the point. That's the, yeah, it's the end of the point. You guys are nominated for it. Try it. Try it. Try like, no, no, it's the end of the point. God forbid fine, we try to make it. people laugh. You guys are yeah, nominated for a journalism award. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry. Journalism shorty. All right. So people march down to get their flu shot, and? So they walk down. They just go. They go here. They don't even know where they're going. They just walk in. They're like, hey. Inject me with whatever you got. All right. Boom. Inject you. All right, Troy. Now let me ask you. Go ahead. What makes more sense? That they're getting something that was worked on in a lab to stop them from getting the flu, or that it's some deep-seated evilness that they're injecting in them. What makes more or, sense? Or, can I add something to yes, that? Yes, please. Instead of going, hey, this was designed in a laboratory, how about I try to do something natural to avoid getting the flu? I don't want to be injected with whatever that is. I don't care what they... The natu- this, they there is something it. natural. It's called getting the flu. Yeah, it's and called... And then you become immune to that It's called exercising. It's called eating healthy. It's called taking your vitamins. Uh, and get, and living a healthy lifestyle. And you can avoid the flu. Yeah. So, so what's wrong with saying, you know I what? I don't want to go do that. There's you nothing still wrong with get, saying that. You could still get a virus, you a viral oh, flu. But say I don't want to get injected from what they're giving me. Getting your immune system up is a very healthy thing. All right, two things. First of all, you sound like Hulk Hogan there, which is nice with the vitamins and stuff. Take your vitamins, brother. Right. And the <laughs> other thing is, if why would the government make it so complicated, like talking and getting flu shots, when the government could possibly open up their own burger joint and have the fucking poisons in the burgers? Oh. Well, what are you saying, Opie? It would be a lot easier to do it that way. Well, there are, there is poison in, in, in burgers. Here's, here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. But I'm just saying they can make it a lot easier instead of complicated, here's, where they have to talk you into actually getting a shot. Here's for, the thing. Yeah. The flow when put they can the water. They could easily just set up some joints that uh, put they, it in the water they, system. They know this burger joint is bad news, so the people they don't want to get the poison certainly know that. Don't go to fucking uh, this burger joint. And and by you the know way, when you drink bottled water. There isn't shit in this. Exactly. And that's that's. I mean, I was being sarcastic. I mean. You don't, I don't. You don't want to go down that road because nobody is regulating what is what this is. By the way, yeah. though. By the way, for for these theories about poison flu shots or government fluoride in the water, whatever mm-hmm. it is, there are easy solutions to these things. The government could make flu shots mandatory very easily. Mm-hmm. Make them mandatory, uh, especially now with the new health care bill being passed. Yeah. Uh, the government can easily fluoride up all the bottled water if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. If they really wanted to, people could avoid tap water and they could get their fluoride in a different way. And also, this is what kills me. Nobody ever takes into account the psychological aspect of this. People say, well, uh, these foods are loaded with poisons, and therefore we're all getting more sick because of them. Well... Maybe we're all getting more sick because that's in our heads right now, and the holistic aspect of that has us all thinking, I'm going to get sick, I'm going to get sick, I'm going to get sick, and that can make you sick. Psychosomatic? Well, not psychosomatic. Uh, uh, medicine will tell you that if you have, if, if your body has a propensity to be, uh, uh, to, to be subject to a certain ailment, for instance, like a, a heart attack or something like that, and you get yourself worked up, and you can literally give yourself a heart attack. Not a fake heart Whoa. attack. You can make yourself have Mentally. a heart attack. Right. So my point is, is that, that 
Uh, no, I can't. How do you but work my through friend, that? No, meaning... My friend's got a heart condition. Try, try to make that happen. Oh, oh come on, man. I'm on a roll See, try, here. It's not just to get the, uh, but like the point, beat everyone up in this room. The point is, is if this stuff is so bad for you, mm -hmm. well then, how come everybody uh, before this generation or this current society that we're living in now was fine? Was fine. <laughs> well, my hey, dad ate whatever he wanted his whole life. He's still alive. He's still kicking. He's still fine. Never had a goddamn worry about eating too much red meat or too much pizza or too much McDonald's. He's but on average, the, the life expectancy has gone up over the and years. What do you mean he's fine? And he's still alive? Average. He's totally alive. He's perfectly healthy. He's 65 years old. 64. It, ha it happens at 74. But, uh, <laughs> 74 but, is the age. But my point is, they'll, they'll make you think Look now around. that Prove the government wrong. is injecting uh, every cheeseburger with AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and if you eat one, you know, you'll be dead at 15 yeah, years old. It's like, it's... Any AIDS back there? It's, it's not AIDS, but there's preservatives in it. There is, uh, they, they give the cows hormones. Yeah. So there, there's, there's a whole string of things that they're doing to food now that they weren't doing in your father's but generation. But it might just be irresponsibility. They're doing that to have better food and, better. And, and don't realize, oh, fuck, breast there is, but there there is, is some after effects of it. If, if, you're it. Putting, if you're putting hormones, <laughs> you ever see what cows look like that are pumped full of hormones? Oh, the delicious is the, how they it's look. It's disgusting. <laughs> You know, and if you if you they got uh, beautiful, bodies. you know what an old steak used to taste like. <laughs> and I love steak, dude. That fucking sucks. A lot of grizzle, a lot of gristle. Now it's just this f nice, plump, juicy steak. Yeah. It's like who cares what they're doing with hormones? Right now, have they? Yeah, yeah. And life expectancy is uh, uh, greater than it, it's ever been in this country. So what what problem is that? Irradiated food. They're making more food. Uh, not as much waste. Corn is great. You ever see a fucking era corn now compared to what it was like years ago? It's better years to ago, eat it looked natural. Like that, looked like that fake corn you hung on your fucking door on Halloween, and now it's the golden fucking golden nuggets <laughs> on a fucking, on a buttery nice it, corn cob. It literally looks like popcorn it's before beautiful. you pop it. <laughs> Do you know corn cobs these days look beautiful? If you showed a today corn cob to a guy fifty years ago, he'd go, "What the fuck is that? It's beautiful." It's it's genetically altered. Jumping G. Hosey fat. <laughs> you're, you're genetically altering this shit. So yeah. it, just because it looks good doesn't mean it's healthy for you, though. Uh, you never know. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know if it's unhealthy. Well, I'm just saying that yeah, people I, are getting sicker now from food than they ever have and been. It's and it's giving nine-year-old girls tits. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's necessarily unhealthy. And there is no better example than fear versus consumption than, oh. than everything going on with the health craze. They tell you that you can't eat anything except la lettuce and boiled chicken or else you're going to die. And then you go to buy a salad with boiled chicken on top of it, and it's $14 for iceberg <laughs> lettuce with <laughs> shit fucking processed chicken on top. Go to Cozy. These fucking morons. That go, Wendy's is bad for you. We need to eat it cozy. Really? What are you going to eat? You're going to eat a chicken Caesar salad sandwich, you fat yeah. fuck? Like yeah. that's any better for you? With that processed fucking Oscar Mayer chicken <laughs> that they dump in there and that Paul Newman creamy Caesar salad dressing? Uh, yeah, no, that's way healthier than a Baconator. Go fucking eat it. <laughs> Enjoy it. All right, well, let's, uh, we should take a break. Yeah, you got me all worked up. I now. know, no, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> Honestly, it's a good workout. Don't get worked up. I, it's unhealthy. I like listening to Joe DeRosa. <laughs> yeah. Fez gave himself a heart attack, so you're on to he something. He did? Yeah, he certainly did. My, my friend's wife has a heart condition. She had two heart attacks last year, and she almost had another one. She had the symptoms, and the doctors were like, you were, she was, they were like, you were working out. You started to feel a little lightheaded, and they go, dude, if you start focusing on that, you can literally give yourself another heart Holy attack. Holy shit. Yeah, it's fucked up. Or if that's Mine true, why weird. can't you give yourself abs? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying. Can you think yourself into being in shape? Yeah. I can't why are you even... only thinking yourself into being sick? <laughs> I can't even think that hard about abs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a little I care. Joe DeRosa killing for us today. We appreciate that. Troy Kwan, thank you so much. Yes, Troy. Troy's hey, had a rough hey, week, Mr. I can tell. Troy, is, he's going to drink this oh, weekend. Yeah, he's Not got it. a rough week. That's cool. Yeah. Man. Still to be part of you guys' show, so. <laughs> you're representing some people out there. That's all. Yeah, that's what this damn thing's totally about. I, I understand, but I, I just we all represent people out there. I'm not. We a, come I, from very different uh, walks of life here. I, I, conspiracy theorists have an agenda to push their agenda on you, and I, I have no desire to push my agenda no. on anybody. But that's why I, I have no agenda. That's why. No. I, that's why I set up what you say with he has questions. Right. So I'm not you necessarily know, saying you're a conspiracy guy. And I'm not guys. saying that everything that those guys say is the gospel truth, the conspiracy guys. But, you know, 
sometimes they say interesting things. Sometimes Dr. Kaku makes an interesting point. Interesting All right. point. All right. Thank you, Troy. Doctor. Thank you. There goes Troy. And uh, you know what? We might. It's all right, Troy. You had a good week, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. It's a Quan Spiracy. Spiracy. He is pissed. I know he is. He you can see a, it in his eyes. He's an angry dude. He's going to fuck someone Holy up. Holy shit. I just hope it's not me. Uh, listen, we're going to come back, and I think we're going to go. I think we're going to go hoarders. Unless Joe oh, has something. I love fucking hoarders. What do you, you want to talk about? Is that that Joe? fat fucking... Whatever you guys want yeah, to The one you talked about earlier oh, this week. We, we got finally got the audio. on that. I want to... I, oh, good. And also the season finale of Hoarders <laughs> is uh, coming up. Sweet. Yes, and it is a woozy. And a thought. A woozy. A woozy. A doozy. Or a doozy. <laughs> I was watching <laughs> Intervention. I'm woozy. <laughs> and I was watching Intervention, one of your favorite shows. Yeah. So, so it was on. I'm like, Hot crack whore? What episode? It was, uh, yeah, with the blonde. Hot meth head? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the lunatic boyfriend? Right. Saying, look, you're just going to be back down on the street. You're with a whore, whore and she smacks him. Um, yeah. Dumb bitch. So the premise <laughs> is they're doing a documentary on addicts. On drug addicts. I know they're drug addicts, but not one of these dummies can't figure out that it's actually was, for intervention? I was just saying that. You were? Yeah, I, as I'm watching it, going, they always go to this hotel room not knowing that, like, their family's gonna be in there. And I want I want to see all the footage of the people that went. Fuck you! Fuck I know you. this is for intervention, you idiot. I watched yeah. the show. I ain't going. And, and the answer would be, well, they're drug addicts, so they're not thinking clearly. Really, yeah. every single one thinks it's a documentary on addicts or addiction. Well, they are fucked up on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you watch Celebrity Rehab? I watched. This. <laughs> Looking at Danny. This is what? <laughs> all I saw was Junior Prom. Let me tell you what. <laughs> The what? Let me tell you what you need to do. Anthony, what? what? Anthony. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Anthony, I'm sorry. What's the baby show you watch? Little Miss Perfect? I like, well, uh, it's called? I, I like Little Miss Perfect better than Toddlers and Tears. What, what, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What is it? I like uh, Little Miss Perfect is right. better than Toddlers and Tears. So this is what you do. You watch Little Miss Perfect. Yeah. Then you seg into <laughs> intervention. Intervention. And then you move on to celebrity rehab. Okay. And you finish up. Your I don't night like with, celebrity rehab. And you finish up your night with Dance with the Stars. I like hoarders. It's, it's, it's an arc. Hoarders. It's an arc of what happens in real life. Where do you fit hoarders? That's a good in? point. Hoarders. I don't know where you fit hoarders. That might be another that's, arc. That's we the start. end. I feel like hoarders is a whole other day. That's, that's what I'm a saying. whole other ballpark. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. But if you say from the, what, all the shows I mentioned, it all kind of makes sense. The Little Miss Perfect people are fucked up, so they move into fucking doing drugs. Then you got to do their intervention. No, thing. how about sixteen and, then, and pregnant? 16 and pregnant? Is after uh, Little Miss Perfect. Then 16 and pregnant. Wait, so how does it go now? Little Miss Perfect. Little Miss Perfect. Where do the drugs come in? Uh, after um, you have the 16 baby? and pregnant, yeah. So you go Little Miss Perfect, then it, it moves nicely into 16 and pregnant. 16 and pregnant. Okay, I got you. Then you go into intervention? Intervention, Because now yeah. they're fucking drug addicts. Yeah. Because okay. they're horrible lies between the, the beauty pageants yeah. and, and uh, you know, squeezing something out of their young twats. Right. <laughs> So then you go intervention. <laughs> now, nah, yeah, the intervention happens. Now they're, you got to get into some rehab. So rehab. You go celebrity uh -huh. rehab. Celebrity right. rehab. And what do we do after celebrity rehab? Um, dance with the star. I thought that was the perfect the dance. Then, yeah. a fun, then a fun one because you're all rehabbed out. But then you crash into hoarders. And you end up a loner in your no, house. No, hoarders, I am agreeing with Joe. That's Tuesday night programming. So we need a we need an arc that includes hoarders. Hoarders mm. is a tough one because it's so. But what would be the show before Hoarders? That's what I'm saying. It's tough. It's, or does it start it's with so hoarders? oddly psychotic. Like I don't even know if they had a show. If they had a show about people that were OCD and germaphobes and shit, that would that would be what you follow Hoarders with. Because they clean up and then they go in the other direction off the deep end. Mm. But they don't have that. Like, I don't even know what you would couple with hoarders. It's so odd. Well, this hoarder is, is somebody that, like, kind of, you know what? Later in life that fucked in. But we'll go to crazy. break, and this is great because after the break, someone on this fucking phone is going to have the answer of the hoarder's arc. <laughs> all right. Where all, all right. the programming makes sense. Yes. Damn. I think, because uh, I know they did one season, but I haven't seen it back for a second, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's not around anymore. But there was a show called Obsessed. Obsessed. Well, it was all about oh, OCD yeah. people, yeah. and like I actually had to tap out of it. Like I, I couldn't watch the episode. So oh, they did have a show about that. Yeah, I couldn't. It so was you go obsessed crazy. into hoarders. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. No, I would go hoarders into, into obsessed? obsessed. Do you think obsessed is actually like crazier people than the hoarders? Well, only here's why: because hoarders is hoarders is like the intervention for messy people or whatever you want to call it. So <laughs> messy. So they people. clean them up, and then they go off the the shit house deep end in the other direction. That's my point. 
obsessed. If you're already a, a fucking germaphobe, neat freak, you would never collapse into hoarders. But if you're a hoarder, you could transition into the other thing. Does I got that make it. sense? I gotcha. I got I it. Like it. Antique Roadshow. Oh, oh, shit. Then we need a bridge to hoarders. <laughs> Pickers. Road. Pickers is that like might that. be a little too similar. We're, we're uh, smarter yeah, than yeah, these yeah, people. We're smarter like than this. Antique, that's a good call, dude. Or or, or you, you go, do the picking and then you take your horse shit to Antique Roadshow. I think you go hoarders, Antique Roadshow. No, you go Pickers, Antique Roadshow. Right. Because you got to pick the you shit out first. with hoarders because then you're just stuck, and then now stuck you're in a house But there's got to be another one between Antique Roadshow and hoarders. What if it's hoarders, then pickers, then antique roadshow? No, you but can't you, be hoarding you can't if you hoard haven't picked first. yet. You gotta pick. And, right, I, you, you always gotta okay. pick first. I think it's pickers, hoarders, antique roadshow. I think antique roadshow is is the redemption. You, you've you've you, you've. Oh, so even though you're only bringing one lousy fucking dumb clock from the 17th century, you have a million clocks in your house that the people don't know about. Maybe you right. threw them all away, and that's the one you kept because you thought it might be worth something. I mean, we got to make a little backstory here. We got to. We're trying it. to get Tuesday night programming set here, <laughs> Joe. Pawn stars, they could pawn off some of their fucking. Oh, yeah, but shit. they wouldn't do but that. How would they, they do that? Because you're a hoarder. <laughs> they would. But hoarders is about getting nuts. better. That's my point. Is at the end of hoarders, you're supposed you ever to watch the show. They never get better. Yeah, I know. But some, you know, sometimes they'll clean up the house a little storage bit. Storage wars, where they have all their shit in a big storage locker. There you go. We might go to the phones. I think p- the listeners are going to have to help us out both. with these show arcs. We call them show arcs. Mm. I like it. Yeah. Oh, what, you had one, Danny? No, I was just saying Storage Wars is a, probably a good fit because first they have all the shit, and then the shit yeah. has to be somewhere for a little bit. And then they can't then, afford to keep it. And then they can sell the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we need uh, Wednesday night programming has to be about the fucking fat slob. Ah, okay. You got those. the biggest loser. You got Cake Boss. Okay. But we got to like balance this out and put now, it all together. And I never watched MTV, but it was on in my house. And uh, I saw some show called "I Used to Be Fat." I used to be fat, and it's just that could be after fucking it's just biggest these loser. Fat teenage girls. Oh, it's <laughs> just great. bouncing around. It's hysterical. <laughs> Disgusting slobs. <laughs> I know, and they're all proud of themselves because they lost oh, like twenty pounds, but I they know. still need to lose <laughs> another forty. Fat. Ryan in Calgary. You got Pickers. My strange addiction, storage wars hoarders. Mm. Oh wait, no, say it again. Sorry, pickers. Pickers. Uh. My strange addiction, because now you pick it through garbage to find that dumb thing. And storage wars, because now you got to store the shit, and then your storage area gets uh, overcome. So now you become a, a complete hoarder. Now you got to go hoarders to storage area, because storage would come after. It's like your house is full of shit, so you got to get storage space now. That's true. Yeah. That's got to come after. I want the arc that ends with uh, first 48. <laughs> well, that, we could do that arc, too. So we could do a, yeah. a criminal one, a fat one, it's a, are we a there? Are we one, there yet? Right. Um, and a meme. Are we there yet? <laughs> a me, me, me night. The first 48. Just <laughs> meet, not, meet the Browns. <laughs> you know how they had must, must watch TV or whatever? First 48 cold case file. Must watch TV? Yeah. yeah. I would have a night TV. called just must see TV. Sorry. I would have a me, me, me night. I like it. Me. It's all right. about these fucking me, me, me's out there. I think know? we figured out the hoarders arc. Yeah. I think we can move on to the next one. Wait, what is it now? I think it's... That guy had it, except I would flip hoarders with, with storage wars. So you'd go pickers. Uh-huh. So i got to fix this up here. My Strange Addiction, hoarders, storage wars. Yeah, then Antique Roadshow. Mm. Just as a nice little at the end. I hate it. Maybe they fixed ending. it. Yeah, we I don't like it now. I kind of like it. Where, where's the part where someone's dead? Yeah. <laughs> you got to have that. Yeah. First 48. Fucking, first 48. First 48. Right. <laughs> no, believe me, that's a whole different story, though. <laughs> uh, I, 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 all right. Well, then we don't need the antique roadshow. Just go end it with end it on a real sour note with hoarders. Yeah. There's that other show called, like, Hoarding or something. Yeah, that's it's not a, as good. It's a ripoff, but they usually redeem them at the end. Yeah, I don't like that one. Their houses are never as messy. It's it's awesome, though, when they show the disgusting house, and then they do that camera trick where it shows what it transitions yeah, yeah, into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still yeah. like shit on the walls. Yeah. That's called a crossfade. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, 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 the exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole house is still a shithole, but they're like, look, I cleaned this counter yeah. off. Great, you know, clean like, up. Hey, good for you. If that was the first shot you saw at the house, of the house, you'd still go, wow, what a shithole. Yeah. <laughs> but since it was such a shithole. <laughs> it is a disgusting. Uh, it's, it's so selfish, hard. too, that fucking. It is. They give uh, up everything they found. I, and they're crying, like, they took my children, and my family is the most important thing. Okay, how about you throw away this doll? No! Uh, then you don't fucking care about your family. 
Tell me, you dummy. So yeah. we'll, we'll do we'll do the hoarders when we come I'm back. Hear that okay. fat and bitch. more show arcs. And let's not just think about shows happening right now. There's there's reruns all over the fucking place. Maybe squeeze in an old show that kind of makes everything make sense. Can we make up new shows that we need? <laughs> if we have to. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Joe Rose in studio. <laughs> we got to film the show that's happening in between God the show. Damn. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what do we got? We got uh, the latest production piece from Derek, D Boy. Wow, he is a production machine. And we also got Hoarders Clips. I want to hear that fat fuck. All right, let's do that. Then. I love how nasty this woman, woman First, was. First, uh, Troy Kwan had a rough week with his uh, Troy uh, Spiracies or Kwan Spiracies, whatever, right? Kwan Spiracy. And then he had a, a a rap battle with Danny. Yeah. And uh, who won? It was interesting to say the least. <laughs> oh wait. Uh, D Boy saying to hold off. He wants to make a change real quick. Oh wow! He's a fucking perfectionist. What a perfectionist! Let, let, let me see if God. this is old. I see, yeah, let me see. Man's an old. artist. Man's an artist. Holy shit! <laughs> new year, new motivation. Uh, it really is. It's unbelievable. We're all on top of our games. So they rap battle. Wait till week. March first. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to change. That's about when it changes. Usually, yeah. We, we come in here with the new year and we're like a blazing man. We're right back, and then we're a well-oiled machine, all rested. Just hang on a second. And, I, and the hope comes back. Oh, <laughs> I usually hope. Uh, I say it comes back. Oh, <laughs> for a little bit, just for a tad. I'm the opposite. I usually don't spike up till about March. Really? Yeah, I start out <laughs> slow, man. This part of the year is depressing, man. Yeah. Is that so fucking cold it's and not, shit? And see, that's, yeah, see, that's really why you got to get into sports because it doesn't get depressing until after the Super Bowl. When's the Super Bowl? For sports people, then Super Bowl ends, and then you're like, oh, fuck, now what? When's the Super Bowl? February? February, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, I guess that's something to look forward to. I get very depressed then they when throw, there's... Then yeah. they throw that Sports Illustrated swimsuit calendar at you, and that helps you for about a, a couple Jesus, of days. there's fucking Come pornography on. up the yeah. ass on what the internet. Ten? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I still like that old school shit where there's some clothes on the body. Really? I certainly do. On the body. I don't, <laughs> On dude. the body. The I need body. to see a yes. fucking... <laughs> Urine stream at this point, something. <laughs> really, just destroyed my fucking head, man. It's terrible. I've, I'm trying to cut back on the porn, man. You know, because I think it fucks up your your sex drive, your libido. It does fuck you up a little bit, man. It's like you're releasing too much steam from the engine. You, it, you don't have that chook chook when you need it. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you're uh, porn and jacking, I'm way back on the porn myself. Yeah. You're way back on it or back in it? Way back, back and You're off. You're backed off? Oh, back and off. Yeah. But that, yeah. that's that's a cycle, though. It is. it is. It is. It's like drinking. You know, you have, like, your heavy drinking periods, and then you, and then you mm. kind of take it easy for a while, and then you, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> when when <laughs> does it take it you easy? You really looked at the wrong in? person <laughs> with yeah, that one. Jesus. Joe's looking right at me. I'm like... What? It will back off when he's napping. Right? That crap, that <laughs> crap has pull. no dips. There's no dynamic in that one. Yeah, my dip is a straight line. My dip is breakfast. <laughs> hey, you uh, you drinking better? Better? Yeah. I drink great. <laughs> has it uh, is it modified? Um, Have you modified your drinking? Nah. When uh, well, over the holidays, it was just in out in of control insanity. I mean. Every day, starting at probably one in the afternoon, uh -huh. and it would go until you know, wake up on the couch with a spilt beer in my lap. <laughs> Pretty who? much just with who or by well, yourself. That depends. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, was it was it? I mean, were you having little festive things at the house? Or? Yeah, yeah, it was like festive things, and, then, and then, yeah, there were parties, uh, uh, people over, just. And, and then I was eating like shit because the cheese and crackers are out and chips and dips and stuff because there's parties on. And it was just so, oh, God. That's well, why I've, now I'm just back to fucking turkey. And What's and, your favorite cheese? Let's get into this right uh, now. Fucking yeah. sharp cheddar oh, is the God. shit. Uh, damn it. Not. Dude, do you, do, do you do cheese combos? You start with a little, uh, you, you settle in with a little Swiss. 
I love uh, the Swiss. big Swiss that you right, slice. Right. Yeah. And then you go into a little sharp cheddar, and then you finish it off with one of those fucking uh, uh, the, the with the uh, the, the, the spice spread? in it. The fucking uh, I don't yeah. like I don't the, like the those. pepper jack. The pepper jack. Pepper jacks. Pepper good. jacks are right, but the see Monterey Jack cheese doesn't have a lot of flavor. It needs salt. Yeah, yeah. So you're relying. Let me. Can I tell you how I do this? Can, yeah. can, you I, can I share combo? these? I got Please a fucking do. combo, dude. And you throw in some blue cheese to really shock the palate. Mm. Here's how I go. I go with a. Let's I go, go with a Vermont sharp cheddar. I'm not nice white that sharp mild cheddar. chedder oh, wide fuck bottom. it. Right. <laughs> a sharp cheddar. Oh. I get a fucking hard Parmesan or or an aged provolone, something with real bite to it. Yeah. That's where I go blue cheese. And then like a Munster or Swiss, something medium in between that you just kind of balance. Where do you throw the out. grapes in? Uh, you know, a couple grapes in between some cheese. That's I'll, not bad. I'll go green grape, apple slices. Nice. Wine. You know? With some wine. Prosciutto. Wine, yes. A prosciutto. prosciutto very good with some there. apple slices. You ever have a whiz of cheese? That's really uh, just <laughs> Right in the mouth. Stuff. Right in the yeah. mouth. What fruit right do you mouth? eat with the uh, yes. cheese whiz? Oh, my God. Yeah, I got to have a Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. Yeah, really? yeah, I don't know why that grossed me out so much. This whiz. was just a stall tactic. We got the uh, was. the change has been made, and now B, uh, D Boy has has handed in handed in a perfect production. It's, uh, in his eyes, it's perfect. Perfection now. on an all new Butt Files. Homosexual sci fi <laughs> investigative couple Muldoosh and Sally argue the authenticity of a mysterious uh, pornographic tape. Why are you so being so confrontational? Because I, I didn't tell you to watch shit. You implied it, saying, "Well, hey, you didn't." Well, you didn't watch this yet. When you watch this, you're going to be blown away. When did I tell you to watch it? I said I found. I said I found it interesting. Dude, why, why are you being like this now? We're just talking about this. Wow, Mr. Passion over here. But the couple soon finds their homoerotic partnership spiraling out of control. Don't, don't touch me. I don't want you to touch oh me. Oh my God! I don't want you to touch me. I don't, I don't want you. Who the fuck did you be touching me? I'm trying to talk to you. Really? You don't have to touch me. You can talk to me and not touch me. Find out if the two lovers will find the transgendered individuals responsible for their dilemma. If you're like, oh, I'm telling you to watch this. I didn't tell you to watch it. You're making shit up. Why are you so hung up on this? Why are you so mad at me today? Because every time I come in here and I say something that you don't like, this is what you do. Here, ready? <sighs> All on the next Butt Files. <laughs> butt Files, huh? Uh-oh. Why does it always have to be gay on Oh, it's show? always very gay. Extreme oh, I gay. I don't That's appreciate the lies that are in there. <laughs> oh, you still go to Human Resources. I, I would. I would love I would. a relationship with Troy, but he won't have me. Oh, that That's sad. I think you guys are going to get along eventually. I got along with Troy. I'm not even. Try. I'm not even making. I was kind of like. Well, I'm not even this? making a, uh, a joke. I got along with Troy. I got to ask a question. Who's who's screening the phone? Well, Kenny was for a who's, while. Who's on there right now? Troy, but he's coming in. Troy. Oh shit! Not Troy again. He's <laughs> fucking. Troy. He's, I, I really Troy. have to. I really have to oh, ask you. I really, <laughs> I really got to ask you about this one. Yes. Now this is something that was brought up before the show. My spelling's atrocious. No, no, no not not okay. spelling. We we were talking about a, a, a subject. Um, it's things like uh, personal personal information um, uh, about uh, us uh-huh. and ways there are to get that right. certain information. Line four says, uh, "I'm not even going to read it." No, I know, I know what it it's, is. It's it's access to certain right. Uh, th- why would I want that on the air to make <clears throat> more people know? That there's information that they could get. Well, I've put up stuff before that I would never think you guys would ever want to go to, and then you guys make something out of it. So I don't want to change. If you don't want to go to it, I wouldn't think you'd go to it. Okay. I, I just I would look at that and think like that. that uh, okay. I mean, it's nothing. Next, next time that comes up, I, I won't I won't let that go It's through. nothing that, that I would, you know, freak out about. I, I fucking, that's why I'm armed. <laughs> right, absolutely, I know. But, uh, you know, it's something, you know, who would want to touch on that, really? All right. I don't know. Did, did, you, like, did, did you like Butt Files? Yeah, it was good. Butt Files was great. And I, I have no problem with Danny. You do have a sense of humor. Yeah, absolutely. I have no problem with Danny. I, I, I actually, oh. I enjoy, Danny and sex, I have hung sex out. Sex with Danny? I enjoy sex with Danny. Uh, <laughs> Bam, there it is. Ah, there, there it uh. is. That's the <laughs> line. Let's let's update the piece. <laughs> no, it's cool, man. I, and and I've 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 hung out with Danny outside of here, and honestly, outside of this building, he's he's a cool motherfucker. But yeah, outside so, of this building, wow, that was so well, very. Well, I like you inside the building. The building affects me. <laughs> I, think. I, think the, I think the building affects everyone. I'm, not, I'm a fan. It's like, I'm it's a like fan of inside the Overlook Hotel. <laughs> this place is like the Overlook yeah. Hotel. <laughs> in fact, in fact, I never want to see Danny outside of this building. <laughs> You're not a fan of outside Danny? Outside Danny. That's a nice bummer. I'm a fan of inside Danny. Jesus. 
I'm just kidding. I love Dave. No, that's all. That's all I had to say. So you know, whatever. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't need it to go any further if Danny doesn't need to go any further. So. See, I never had a problem in the first place. That's no, I know. It, it just listen, man. You know, I'm just trying to make my point. I'm just For trying the sake to say. Of the show, I hope it goes further. Just All right, well then, fuck the you, record. Danny. Keep <laughs> my ass. <laughs> Alex Jones, bitch boy. Oh, see you. God damn it. Oh, you have to go sure. there, Breaking news. You've been chosen to receive a $100 Walmart gift voucher. Nice. To there find out go. more, call... Eight seven seven four four eight five seven eight six. Motherfucker. That's great, Get dude. Get me a phone. You could buy a lot of shit with that at Walmart. You could buy a, hey, damn. a lot of a lot of socks, a lot of sheets, a lot of Totino's <laughs> pizza mean, rolls. Fucking four thread count sheets. <laughs> where did, wait, where did Troy go? <laughs> Make fun of Walmart all you want. That store <laughs> where did Troy knows go? What, it, what it's doing. You could buy Troy a sweatshirt that fits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so it's a little small. It's called Slim Fit if you're a little younger. Is that Slim Fit? That's Slim Fit. That is fucking... I love how I have to buy uh, double XLs from Abercrombie & Fitch to fit into a large. Thank you. Oh, that's not... Are they tight are they over there? Doing? Hold they are they you, tight? They make you feel bad because they, they get the guys with the are fucking... Are they tight? They get the guys with the fucking abs and the... Right. Shit, and that's that's like who wears a small from Abercrombie normally, and Fitch? Normally, I'm a 31 inch waist. I go to Abercrombie. Yeah, I'm, I got to get like a 36. <laughs> that don't make sense. Maybe it's time to stop it's, shopping there. Yeah, I, I, trust me, trust me. Yeah. Does I'm it? starting to walk I'm by. I'm going to big and tall. I, I've started walking by uh, Abercrombie and Fitch more than uh, I've and gone in lately. Don't yeah. you feel like such a fat fuck too? Because I, I have certain clothing lines like that where you have to go and you go. No, well, normally I wear 33. <laughs> yeah, that's just but, uh, yeah, this is, you know. Yeah. Nothing right. makes you want to kill yourself faster than putting on a sweater that turns out to be too tight. Oh and you have to God. look at yourself in the mirror. Ugh. Like, holy that'll mother of That'll God. cling on every bad curve and <laughs> right. bump on you. Oh, will it? <laughs> oh, that's a bad one. You'll see your own moles in some of these tight <laughs> fucking sweaters. Yeah, and you know it as, oh, you're, as you're pulling the neck part down over your head. You're yeah. just going, this is going to look so, <laughs> so fucking, fucking bad. bad. You never want to pull a shirt on where you could see your belly button through the shirt. Right. Because <laughs> like, oh. it divots inward. It it's in. <laughs> what about this when you put on a short sleeve shirt and then you have to, you realize that you're getting fatter and because you have to pull, pull the, the fucking sleeve, the short down. sleeve down? Because <laughs> you're just getting all bunched oh, up. <laughs> and I have a legitimate question about Abercrombie and Fish. I swear it's not a goof. I have no idea. When I drive home and I pass that store on Fifth Avenue, there's a line around the corner to get in. What, a, what is that? That's a gag. They do that with uh, the Ugg store up in my neighborhood, too. What? They put out like because uh, the there's vel- literally a hundred people. They put out the velvet rope and like a uh, like a uh, like a carpet in some places, and they actually hold people <sighs> back so it looks like so it's, it looks it's like happening. there's something going on. Are you shitting that me? That Abercrombie Fitch fucking be so. What, what is it on Fifth Avenue? I think it's Fifth and Fifty. Stand out in the snow. I, I've well, actually maybe. I've actually waited on the dumb line because <laughs> I, I had to get something, whatever, or want to go in there, and the place is a warehouse. It's fucking huge. But they do that because of what you just said. You drive by and like, wow, what the fuck's going on in there today? I got to check that out someday. Is that? It's like they're they, making it look like it's a, a hot club or and something. And it's almost Party every day. So I started on. thinking. Stores like, are starting to do that. Uggs is doing that up in my neighborhood with his line every day. And then you could see into the store in this case, and it's wow. not that crowded. That's, that's so dumb. That's yeah, so that fucking like dumb. It's one of the things they're doing now. The uh, I don't, I've never yeah. bought anything Hipster from shit. from uh, Amber Crombie and Fitch ever in my life. I've gotten like presents where I open Sweat the box. Oh, thanks, Fud. <laughs> Shut that you don't fucking like box. You don't Burn. like Abercrombie and Fitch stuff. <laughs> I dress like a fucking Cuban militant. That's like my my every day. It's comfortable. I, I don't have to worry you about dress, it. <laughs> you dress like you're headed to the militia right after the <laughs> oh, yeah. show. What do you mean? Yeah. Like and certainly has a <laughs> and has a look. He does. I've just adopted this whole. I don't give a shit. I'm dressing in military military militant gear. Every time somebody gives you a piece of clothing as a gift, you go. Can can I? Exchanges for something in all black yeah. flannel. Can I get Is that something possible? I can tuck blouse the pants in my yeah. boots with? Do you have one with more secret pockets? <laughs> I need in plenty it? of pockets. <laughs> I do have so many pockets. You know, you never <laughs> know how many magazines shit. you gotta take with you. <laughs> <laughs> for the big riot. You never know, right? For the big race sure. war. 
Sure. Uh, we don't have time to do the hoarders clips. Fuck that. Yeah, we could save it. She's that fat bitch is going to be just as obnoxious uh, <laughs> next week. And next week is the uh, <laughs> season finale with the rats. Yes, with the rats, rat guy. Fifteen hundred rats, they're saying. At least in his house. Yeah. And he's in there. Yeah, he's living in there. They're crawling all yeah. over the place. They show an entire fucking. Can I see the preview? Room filled up with fucking rats. It and the didn't, guy is uh, just living there. It no, didn't gross me out as much as I thought it would. It just it just was like It's pretty twisted and sick, but I've seen more disgusting like yeah. people living their own shit. Yeah, it was just weird. The it was couple just that like... was throwing their shit filled plastic bags down the stairs because their bathroom broke. And they were shitting in plastic garbage bags, tying them up and throwing them down the stairs, and there was a mountain of human shit bags was, at the uh, bottom of the man. fucking... Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Was there, like, flies and stuff? Oh, fly, flies were the, the best of it. The Maggots, <laughs> fucking cocky roaches. Oh, uh, dude, man, oh, yeah. That, yeah, that yeah. kind of shit makes me gag, man. And they opened the refrigerator, and, and, and she, the, the, all the fat... They're all these fat fucking pigs. Are, they're always talking about, like, I'm a great cook, too. I'm a great cook. And they show her frying up some crap on a hot plate because the stove is covered with cat shit. <laughs> and, and, and they open up the refrigerator. There's dead meat juice, like, like staining really? it. And, and all I'm thinking yeah. is, what is what is she cooking that's so good? How is she saying she's a good cook when, when it, it's horrible? I'd rather be in a VC cave cooking, uh, uh, eating what they're cooking than, than some fat bitch cooking bad meat. <laughs> I hate that show, and I watch it every week. Let's look at this rat guy. <laughs> so this is the season finale. It's online if you want to check it out for yourself. Oh, yeah, here he is. The rat horde has made Glenn's house completely uninhabitable. I'm sleeping out here in my office because they crawl up in a pillow and start pulling my hair out Aww. to try and make nesting material out of it. They've eaten his mattress. Where you've got moisture, like in your eyeballs or on your lips, they'll start licking. Oh, that's adorable. A little tough to uh, sleep that way. <clears throat> My name is John. I've known Glenn about 15 years. What a mullet. They're his friends, he'll tell you. Those are my friends. Hello, friends. I mean, they just crawl all over. Holy, Holy shit. shit. That's a room full of fucking rats, and he's right in the yeah. middle of them. They're crawling all over him as he's feeding them. And, uh, sniff all over you. And ah, they look like yeah. easy rats, though. Not as shit around. all over the those, place, Those look dog. like those easy rats. They don't look like the subway they're, rats. They're not. They're not. They're, yeah, they're, they're like pet uh, store rats. He's throwing fucking feet nah. on the floor, and they're coming out of everywhere. I'm out. I, I'm not impressed. Yeah, I thought they were subway rats. That'll, that'll creep the shit out of you. These are the rats they feed to the snakes and stuff. Yeah, these are pet store rats. That's what I'm saying. Rats. They freak me out. 1,500 of them. Nah, it's not as bad. It's weird. It's not grossing me out, though. You know, they almost look like shit isn't grossing. They me almost out. look like hamsters, right? No, they do. I'm telling you. The fact you. that he, they ate his mattress and they they lick his eyeballs. Eh. It, it's still <laughs> bad, but I was I was expecting to see those fucking subway rats. You see one of them and you're you're freaked out. That's what I thought. And when they uh, when they first said it's it's a guy with rats, I thought it was going to be his apartment was so gross there was rats in right, right. And then, and then like that rats. that would that would yeah. yeah. He bought a few rats and let them reproduce. That's all that is. All right. Yeah. Pet store rats. Yeah. Fuck that. Still bad, Ant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to see a guy with the fucking subway rats. Yeah. Yeah, he just picks him up off the street and he gets fucking. I have actually seen more disgusting on, on that show. Yeah, the like, thing like you just that. said about yeah, the meat yeah, juice yeah, made me gag. Meat, 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 meat juice, meat juice, meat juice. It's one of the grossest things I've ever oh. heard. <laughs> um, on on yeah. Twitter, we got a guy Kyle Drum two thousand two. He yeah. writes OP Radio, which is my Twitter. Yes. <laughs> uh, why the fuck do you shop at Abercrombie? Grow up a tad and become a gentleman. And he writes, try shopping at Brooks Brothers for a nice start. Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers. Oh, my oh, God. Have you Brothers. ever walked through a Brooks Brothers? Uh, Brooks Brothers, yeah, if you want to go teach a fucking class. I know. Or you want to do fake casual Friday bullshit. Do they oh, have the, the, the jackets with the, the patches on the sleeves for yeah. an author? Dude, fuck Brooks Brothers and fuck Eddie Bauer. Dude, fuck both of those you, stores. You ever, you ever get a, uh, a gift certificate for a store and you walk through the entire store and realize... Fuck, I gotta buy socks. I, I gotta buy three hundred dollars worth of socks. Yeah. Cause you can't find one fuck that's ha that happened to me at Brooks Brothers. Yeah. I ended up buying socks. I gotta walk out into the mall and see if anybody wants to buy this fucking gift certificate from me right now, because it's useless. There's a there's a store called uh I think it's uh called Monaco. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know. I know I, the story. It has to be for 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 the gays. I went in there with <laughs> the, the gay. I went in there with the a two hundred dollar gift certificate. And I was so bummed out. I couldn't find one. You can't buy the underwear because th- even that's a little like a little too European, if you know what well, I mean. <laughs> European. So once again, socks. They opened up with a, my gift certificate. They opened up a gay, mainly gay boutique, male boutique across the street from my apartment. It's the shit, dude. The fucking clothes are awesome. Really? Yeah, they have great like plaid and shirts and shit. The back of the pants all cut out. Yeah, you got to go up a side. <laughs> they're maybe, slim. You got to go up a side, but they're fun. It's the shit. Then and maybe I shouldn't be making fun. Then maybe it's more of a European thing. Uh, well, well, Brooks Brothers is just fucking this, lame ass, fucking boring, casual shit. And this Monaco, it, maybe it's European then. No, if they're saying there's good clothes at, at at gay boutiques. Then this is just a place run by gay guys, so they know like it's and not. But it's not club to... gay. It's not fucking. Oof, 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 it's not that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like sweaters and flannel shirts and shit. It's a yeah. cool fucking shop, man. They have really cool t-shirts, like either... throwback tees and stuff. It's a good. T- it's a good place. It's called Tag. Either Five Eleven Tactical Wear or uh, Armani. That's pretty much the only places I shop. <laughs> Armani. Armani or 5'11 Tactical. Did, are you wearing the Armani when you wake up with the spilled beer? <laughs> uh, no, no, that's 5'11 Tactical. That's 5'11. Right, you need the enough. tactical gear for spilt what wine and beer. What the fuck is 5'11 Tactical wear? It's, that's it's what he's wearing. Right it's right there. It's, uh, they make great socks. It's actually, they have their socks, too. The socks are great. <laughs> they really are. Are you, they the socks where it's like you can sweat in them and they, they, they don't? Smell uh, yeah, ever. Yeah, like those you, feel like you, have, socks. you feel like you have ten extra layers of you skin. You pull them on, they're great. They're tight. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's all actually comfy it's, tight. It's clothing for the military and the police and firemen and emergency service workers. So it's very durable, yet very comfortable. <laughs> and right. uh, there are, like you said, plenty of pockets for um, <laughs> magazines and, and, and yeah. weapons. Actually, if you look at this... Um, there is a Velcro Jesus Christ. Uh, shoulder holster right there in the shirt, and and you just seal it Wait, up. Did you say uh, shirt as in T-shirt? Well, no. it's T-shirt time. <laughs> there's a shoulder. There's a holster built yeah, into the shirt. It's inside the shirt. Like, like Officially, the that would shoulder. be inside so the shirt. It's, yeah. It, what you got to do is you put a weapon in there, and and you seal it up like a little. Uh, a little uh, PPKS, a little 380. That reminds me perfectly. of like that reminds right. me of a shirt that I would have got when I was a kid at like Toys R Us, <laughs> <laughs> like a fake army shirt. It's got a holster in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I totally am. I'm like that. I'm like that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Uh, every shirt I have has some hidden pocket for a weapon. <laughs> I like it. You never I like know. It. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. And the there's sh- Velcro on the sides of some of them, the longer ones, where it tears up so you have access to a hip holster. And just, you know, they're all made for um, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Maybe I should start carrying a gun. What do you guys think? Where do you live? New York City. I live Good in the house kitchen. Good luck. Well, I'm getting a gun. More importantly, this guy wants to make fun of you because you, you shopped at a gay place. Oh, uh, uh, there's a surprise. You're yeah. not supposed to be gay ever on this show. I know. Yeah, God forbid. What's he you might as well say? suck the cock. We're walking through the door. Ah, you yeah. suck dick. <laughs> That's what it turns into in, on this show. Walk through the go door. Go ahead, Kevin and we'll give you a shot here. Hey, Joe, you're the only Italian guy in the history of Norristown to ever shop at a gay man's clothing store. <laughs> That's because there's okay. no gay men clothing stores in Norris. Are you from Norristown? Yes, sir. Do I know you from back home? Uh, no, probably not. This is how fuck. Let me tell you about Norristown. I just did a show back there recently. It, that's where I'm basically where I'm from. It is the most. I love it. It's home. It is the most racist, <laughs> close-minded place I've ever been. I I fuck with people when I go back there. I go when you say something. Could I get a realtor's number? <laughs> when you say when you say something progressive or open-minded in Narstown, they react the way people react everywhere else when you say something racist. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, you're creeping me out, dude. What are you talking about?" <laughs> uh, shit. Hey, I got a Philly thing. You heard about the Kensington uh, fucking um, killer there, serial killer? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the rest of the country is not talking about it. <laughs> Guy's killing fucking uh, hookers every other day. He's got a he's got a count. Really, he, he's, he's a, his numbers are impressive, and no one's talking about it. It's supposedly the black guy killing uh, killing fucking uh, drug addict uh, hookers. hookers. I love how the blacks I, are uh, making their way into serial killing. I, it's, I, it's amazing. <laughs> 
We're very diverse as a community. I like this. But it's... There's fewer places on earth that I've seen people give less of a shit about than Kensington. That's why people are not talking about it. <laughs> and that's why, right? Everybody in Philly, when you talk to, when you talk to people in Philly, and that you go, where are you from? Oh, I'm from the blah, blah, blah. You go, where, where Kensington? Yo, fuck you, bro. I ain't from fucking Kensington. All right? Kensington. Exactly. Really, that's, that's not to be from. Is that bad? It's not that it's that bad. It's just, it's just one of those, it's, well, you know, I don't want to, you know, just, I don't want to shit off. I love Philly. It's home. You there's know, some but, shit going on in Kensington, though, man. Yeah, but it's, Philly's fucked up. I don't know up. what the exact number is, but it's bad. How many he's gotten so far? Philly's crime rate, they're competing with, like, Detroit, dude. It's a fucking war zone, man. <laughs> oh, really? Seriously, yeah, it's yeah. really, really bad there, man. So, you know, you don't hear shit about Detroit on the, there's fucking bears and coyotes and shit living in downtown Detroit now. I didn't know that till I went to Detroit. You'd think that'd be n- international fucking news that yeah, that yeah. happened somewhere. Wait, what are you, are you, for real? I'm not bullshitting. Wild animals have are starting to take over the city. That's how I'm abandoned downtown Detroit, dude. Anth- or, or Twelve we, fucking monkeys, they, dude. That is, Seriously, that is. twelve oh, monkeys. <laughs> they uh, they pulled back the border. Uh, 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 of, uh, uh, of downtown Detroit, downtown Detroit, because they couldn't afford to keep uh, to upkeep or to even have these abandoned buildings. So now there's just this no man's land zone of decaying so, buildings. Show me one story that you got wild it's, animals in downtown Detroit. I gotta see this, dude. Oh, well. It's uh, fucking. And what are the web- animals? I got a website. It's for like you. <laughs> bears and coyotes and shit. It's fucking insane, no, dude. Oh, bears. Come Opie, on. I would believe coyotes. Opie, it cost. This is what I learned when I was in Detroit. I did a show out there with Pat and Oswalt. He was on yesterday. Yeah, that's why I bring it up. He, we were, we were laughing about he was this. Great. He's, he's hilarious. We were laughing about this because they were telling us that it cost seven thousand dollars to buy a house oh, in downtown no, Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, we did all that on the show. Yeah, you just can't. You can get a very cheap house up there. There's because you won't have a heat. Like, they won't come get your trash. There's just no services. Lions and <laughs> and bears, oh my. <laughs> Lions and <laughs> and bears, oh my. Pads are the funniest thing. Pads are the funniest thing to the, uh, to the audience. He goes, he goes, he goes, you guys are fucking insane. He goes, they could, t- they, you could be like, you could come to Detroit and be like, you know, you guys have vampires in your downtown area. And you guys are just like, yeah, but just don't go down there. <laughs> <laughs> Like what that is really that? is how they Look treat it. Houses. That They're would be one overgrown. of your houses that you Look. would buy. It's a uh, completely fucking boarded up holes in the roof. Looks like. It Do was you see the black from previous flames? Fires. <laughs> oh, there's holes in the roof like it was shelled. How bad? The house are. looks like it was shelled. How bad oh. do you want to walk around that house right now? Oh, so bad. I love so walking bad. around an old fucking. Oh yeah, that'd houses. be great. You, you know, my old school. They step on needles and crack pipes. They unfortunately uh, rebuilt it finally. Washington Drive School and a little local action oh, set yeah. of Port Long Island. Yes. Uh, Washington Drive School sat there for, I don't know, at least 10 years with, uh, they did nothing to it. And, and finally you, you figured out how to get in there. And we, we took a walk in there once. That yeah. shit is so fucking cool to me, man. There were classrooms with, 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 uh, the kids stuff still hanging from 10, 12 years ago. Underwear? Yeah. Untouched. <laughs> yeah. And with, oh, the, with, the, with the ceilings coming down from, uh, you know, the water and, uh, the, the floors were all buckled. It, I love that shit. Dude, there was an abandoned, uh, mental institution. See that? I mean, near yeah. where I grew up. And it was like, you know, dude, we were like 13, 14 years old. It was like our life's blood to figure out how to break into this. Yeah, fr- we had and you couldn't get into it. It was like the barbed wire and shit around it. But I'm, I'm putting this out there right now. I know people do it illegally because I'm watching the videos online. I even tweeted one of them recently. If someone could get me under fucking ground in New York City, legit, I want to go. Could someone do that? Where? I want to go. <laughs> it's more than sewers. just sewers. There's, hey, all right sort- down the sewer, <laughs> there's all sorts of shit going down on. The Robbie Boy. <laughs> there's, there's rivers that are still flowing under New York City. There's old subway uh, stations that they just boarded up that looks like it did you know, when they were still open. I want to do that shit, but I want to do it legally. I don't feel like getting arrested. Someone could help me out. I would, I would love do that. To. I would go underground. You want to go with me? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go, because I guarantee that fucking river of slime from Ghostbusters is actually down there. <laughs> I would I would go down there. I want to go. I, you I know hear there's some amazing stuff. There's like uh, the the secret tunnel that, what president was it, Ant, that uh, it was his, his, his escape route out of New York City. They still got that. Can we go to oh, the original uh, subway tunnel? It's just a round tunnel wanna, with a round. Let's train. go to that city where the people live in the boxes down there. Oh, the mole people! I learned about that. They, they, they got a lot of those fuckers out in '96, <laughs> but people are still living underground, but not just not as much now. They should have those. Look God, back. how scary would it be? Down I know there? how to do this illegally. <laughs> no. There's a couple spots I know of. 
but I just don't. I'm not brave enough to jump the how fence. Do you, how, do you, how do you do it illegally? What? Can you talk about how you can do it illegally? Or you not, or is it like the kind of thing you can't talk? Well, the about? One video I I posted recently was from Vimeo. The guy was insane. He fucking climbed to the top of the Williamsburg Bridge illegally. Had to jump a couple fences, get inside one of those towers, and what would he do? He just fucking climbed all the way to the top, which is insane. And then he would, he went where uh, the the old Amtrak tunnels are, where the mole people were. He, uh, he I think he went down to um, Canal Street, which it, it's called Canal Street because it used to be a real fucking canal uh, providing water for New York. No shit. And he knew that the grate to open up to go down, go down to see the actual river still happening, which they turned into a sewer. There's got to be a legal way to do it. I mean, it's got to be as I'm simple as some rep from some the Some cops whatever. or some of the, uh, you know, some of the uh, MTA guys. Somebody. Somebody could help me out. There's got to be. I would I would go down there. That show, seconds. Underground Cities or whatever it was called. The under, what was it called? Yeah, it I went think away, think unfortunately. Called, we had yeah. the host on. That cities of the what, Underground. Cities of the Underground. Something That's like my that. shit. I love that stuff. What show was it? I never saw it. It was just Cities of the Underground. He went from city to city checking out all the shit like that's happening under, under shit underground. Shit going on underneath it. That, that, you know, the average person's not allowed uh, down to anymore. What was, like, the craziest thing? Craziest thing <clears throat> was uh, where the fuck was he? He was uh, in one of these Asian countries where the whole mountainside was, like, you know, there was a whole underground city under these mountains and stuff. That's some fucked up shit. Yeah. Wait, 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 but wait, when you that say... They, they had for the war and stuff, so they had, like, a, you know, some of those fucking old Vietna, Viet, I see what you're Vietnam tunnels and all that. Yeah. You, you didn't realize how involved they the were. The Ho Chi Minh Trail. All that shit. Mm. Into all right. Cambodia. In Portland, they had, uh, they had like, trap doors and old bars where you're drinking, and then the door, and now you're underground in these rooms and stuff, and they ship you off for the... Oh, the, that was when they used to steal people. Because they uh, for for ships and because they, they needed they needed mates they needed hands on these ships to bring back all the fucking uh, molasses or whatever the fuck it was I forgot now, but these guys wouldn't volunteer because it was two years at sea. Yes, you scallywag. So they would fucking <laughs> they would fucking get you drunk. They'd and, Shanghai you. Yeah, there you go. The Shang, yeah. being Shanghai. Exactly. So they would get you drunk and then the trap doors would fucking open. And there Jesus you are under Christ. under underground, and then they ship Getting you off. Beaten. And by the time you wake up from your horrendous fucking, you know, buzz, you're your, on a ship, and it's too sound, late. Sound thrashing that you got. Jesus it was a great Christ. show. I should try to find yeah. it on uh, a box set of it or something. Jesus Christ! Show. I got to check that out. How much would you love to have a trap door? Anywhere, just to have one. Would yeah. Be cool. Just laugh at your friends, <laughs> Dick. Uh, <laughs> how great would it be to have that a trap door? Seriously. I'd be too scared to use it, though, because somebody would sue you. They would. Get I so twisted hurt. my knee when like your the, trap door. Like the great Danton when <laughs> his mattress was gone. Let's go to sit. <laughs> Aha. Why is the Sitch uh, dressing like John Travolta now? Was that on last night? Jesus. He is such a... F uh, what the fuck uh, is he doing? Saturday, he looks like Saturday Night Fever now. Mm, I hate yeah. this fucking cunt. <laughs> Which one? Fucking Wendy Williams. Ugh. She sucks. That's Tyler Perry. That's t oh shit. Is that no, Medea? Yeah, that's Medea. Don't know I'm sorry. That. It's Tyler Perry in a wig doing a talk show. <laughs> Figured he could. Oh god. Actually, I'm starting to think that Wendy Williams looks like Herman Munster, but mm. no one's on it yet. Nah, I'm not feeling that. Because her arms are really fucking. Remember when like they try to squeeze Herman into like weird clothes, like a football uniform? Oh, or... Hysterical. Little helmet on his she head. She looks cool. like was able to she doesn't ball, look like, like Herman Munster, but she she does look like Fred Gwynn. Yeah, <laughs> yes. she looks like regular Fred Gwynn. Okay, there you go. You know what I mean? I knew there's something there. Uh, Sammy and Queens. Hey, hey, what's up, boys? Hey. Yeah. Oh, there's some Norwegian guy. I don't know his name. Recently had a documentary on TV and something in the paper where he was allowed to go under New York and found all rivers, streams of water, and secret tunnels. And men but that would do favors. He's Norwegian. <laughs> well, I'm trying to like get someone to do it so I could do it legally, I guess. But yeah. and I want to do it in other cities. I heard in Rochester, a place I used to live, there's a, a fucking subway system, and that one's easy to go under and check out. Man, I would. Yeah, an I'm old actually, subway system in a in a city that had no business having a subway. <laughs> are the trains all down there still? I don't know. I don't know how. I I, I was just reading about it online recently. I'm gonna go down there. We'll run around like Blade. Yeah, I'm gonna go underground in a. Uh, a little while, it's a Midtown Tunnel. Oh, yeah. It's uh, amazing. Joe, I curse you. It goes right we, under a we, river. We went late because of you. <laughs> Fuck you. Because of me. Yeah. What, what are we promoting? We're out of here. Fuck this. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to go underground that bad. Right, I need to go home. 
Righteous Kill every Tuesday at the Ace of Clubs, Let's and I'm at go. CB's Comedy Club all weekend in the West Village. And, Very uh, good. On Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Yeah, Joe DeRosa Comedy on Twitter. Let's start tweeting more, Joe. I did. I, I got about 50 things since I since we've been on the thing here. Uh, 50 since requests. Been on followers. Uh, you know what I mean. Been Whatever the fuck thing. it is. Some things. I got some things. things. Yeah, on yeah. the thing. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> all right, guys.